This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Good morning. Economic Affairs Minister Michael Hakita says food prices not permanent. The government expects costs to fall when inflation eases. Michael Pintard says the FNM is under new management with a new vision. And the Prime Minister does not foresee humanitarian crisis from the shantytown demolitions. It's all straight ahead this morning. I'm Dwight Strawn, and this is Morning Blend. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. Yeah, start on the start on Good morning again, Bahamas. It is Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Again, I'm Dwight Strawn. In a moment, Chester Robards will be joining us. Also this morning, more on fisheries. We told you about the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute conference going on right here in the Bahamas. We're going to talk to Bahamian fishermen but what they are seeing out there. And then later in business, it is Access Accelerator, Small Business Development Center time, and we are talking to them about some uh, folks have had some success with their pitches recently. We'll get details about that this morning. That's all straight ahead, but first, it's time for the overnight, the latest breaking news from while you were sleeping, and the top national and international headlines this morning. In the overnight, Minister of Economic Affairs, Mike Halkita, says that he, he expects the high cost of food items to eventually come down. He said that inflation is a product of supply and demand, and when there is a lot of demand chasing limited supply, prices go up. But he says the reverse should happen as well. When the demand levels off, he expects prices to come down. He said yesterday, quote, we don't subscribe to the argument that once it goes up, it never comes down. We encourage all suppliers and people who sell products to the public to not surrender and say, well, that's the new normal. Prime Minister Philip Davis says he is awaiting a police report on a shantytown fire that destroyed uh, dozens of structures two days before the structures were scheduled to be torn down by the government. A fire ripped through the Cool Acre shantytown Saturday afternoon, destroying roughly 80% of the structures there. The Prime Minister said uh, yesterday that he had concerns. But that he doesn't foresee a humanitarian crisis from the shantytown demolition. Fuel retailers remain desperate for margin increase and are agitating for the government to resume stalled talks on a possible deal. That's according to Vice President of the Bahamas Petroleum Retailers Association, Vasco Bastian. He said the fuel retailers' backs are against the wall. He said the members of the association are putting pressure on the group's leaders to try to finalize a deal with the government that will please both sides. Members of the BPRA plan to meet this week to discuss the issue and hope soon to resume talks with the government. Ahead of a by-election in the West Grand Bahamas, Bimini constituency FNM leader Michael Pintard acknowledging shortcomings in governance during the minutes administration as he assured voters that the party, his party, the FNM, is in a new era under his leadership. He said the FNM has a new vision for the country and a new style of governance. He said, quote, I don't come to politics from any other base than having been immersed in community work. His comments coming as he doubled down on the PLP and that it's been a failure in the communities of West Grand Bahama and Bimini. 
Pintard also saying that as a cabinet minister in the Minister of Administration, he disagreed with the decision following the Hurricane Dorian uh, disaster to form the Disaster Reconstruction Authority to handle the disaster response. Pintard noted that while the move was sold as a means to prevent corruption, he and others believe that this could have been accomplished by increasing checks and balances within the already existing entities. Overseas, thousands more Palestinians have fled northern Gaza on foot. That's going to the UN today as desperation grew over the dwindling supply of food and water. And this intensified shelling and the approach of Israeli troops and tanks. Over 70% of Gaza's population of 2.3 million have already left their homes. But the number of people making their way south has quickened recently as the war triggered by Hamas's October 7th assault inside Israel entered its second month. With no end in sight to the fighting, an increasingly dire humanitarian situation is unfolding inside the besieged Palestinian enclave. International pressure mounted on Israel over the civilians' plight, with the group of seven industrialized nations calling today for the impend- impeded delivery, unimpeded delivery of food, water, medicine, and fuel, and for humanitarian pauses in the fighting. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has so far resisted such calls while leaving open the possibility of smaller breaks in the fighting. Israel has said its war to end Hamas's rule and crush its military capabilities will be long and difficult, and that it will maintain some form of control over the coastal enclave indefinitely, though how it will achieve that remains unclear. In sports, the eight volleyball teams that will be vying for the GSSSA four division titles are set. That's the Government Secondary School Sports Association. After the sudden death playoffs at the Anthal Rogers High School Gym and D.W. Davis Junior High Gym yesterday, the championships are set for today. Kendall Isaacs Gym at 4 p.m. The senior boys matchup will see the pennant winning Anatol Rogers High School And their Timberwolves take on the C.I. Gibson Rattlers. The Senior Girls Division Championship game will feature the pennant-winning C.V. Bethel Senior High Stingrays against the second seed Governor High School Magic. In the Junior Boys Division, the fourth seed Timberwolves take on the second seed L.W. Young Golden Eagles. And the fourth seed Lady Golden Eagles battle the second seed H.O. Nash Lions in the Junior Girls Division. The pennant winners in both junior divisions were eliminated. And from the BAISS, the Bahamas Association of Independent Secondary Schools, they were wrapping up their softball regular season on Monday, and they're going to get into their two-day sudden-death playoffs beginning today at Freedom Farm at 4 p.m. There'll be four playoff games today, the second and third seeds in the junior boys, junior girls, senior girls, and senior boys divisions battle for a spot in the championship games. The number one and four seeds will face each other tomorrow for the final spot in the championships at 4 p.m. at the same location. Read more about it in today's Guardian Sports section. And for Major League Baseball, we are learning uh, that this year's World Series sped by nine inning games averaged only three hours, one minute, the fastest since 1996, according to Elias Sports Bureau. The first postseason of the pitch clock also included defensive shift limits and larger bases, leading to increased stolen bases and appearing to contribute to higher batting averages. Postseason nine inning games overall averaged three hours and two minutes, down from 323 last year and 337 2021, the last season before the pitch calm electronic pitching Pitch calling device was implemented. That mirrored a regular season with an average game of 2 hours and 40 minutes, the lowest since 1985. Just one postseason game top four hours when the Rangers beat Arizona in an 11th inning World Series opener. Six of 40 postseason games exceeded four hours in 2022. That's sports, and that's the overnight. Time for your first look at weather.
In your weather for today, we've got high pressure that is supporting a moderate to fresh breeze and it's moving eastwards across the Bahamas. Beachgoers in the central and southeast Bahamas should be alert as there's a slight risk of rip currents along north and easterly beaches. For all areas today, forecast calls for partly mostly sunny and warm conditions, breezy in the central and southeastern islands with isolated showers. Small craft in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise caution. Winds northeast to east at 10 to 15 knots, building to 15 to 20 knots in the central and southeastern islands. Seas 2 to 4 feet in the northwest and 4 to 6 feet in the central and southeast Bahamas. Temperature-wise today, we're looking at highs getting up to around 86 Fahrenheit, 30 Celsius. Overnight lows tonight getting down to about 73 Fahrenheit, 33 Celsius. Currently in Nassau, it's about 78 degrees under partly cloudy skies. That's your first look at weather this morning. We'll have your extended outlook and a look at the tropics coming up after traffic in just a bit. You're listening to Morning Blend. When we come back, we are discussing the day's top stories right here on Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Your home for fresh news and smart talk all day. of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Street, has those hard-to-find fasteners for you right now. You can find stainless steel regular hex, carriage bolts, galvanized bolts, threaded rods, nails, self-tap screws, sex bolts, anchor bolts, turnbuckles, masonry tools, hand tools, and weed whacker strings. Check out the rope selection and car body fasteners, too. Special orders are welcome. It's your number one fastener store. Screws and Fasteners World, Balfour Avenue and Palm Beach Streets. Call 326-1976. in prizes. You could win. win. A live business. Ultimate business makeover. Sign up or upgrade for business in a box for your chance to enter to win. The ultimate business makeover. Or a new Jack Electric SUV from Easy Car Sales. Go green and win. Thousands and other prizes to be won. Sign up or upgrade for business in a box today. A live business. Ultimate business makeover. For more details, call 601-8911 in Nassau or 602-8811 in the Family Islands. Go CIBC First Caribbean. We help you to get what you want this year. Spin the wheel of wishes. Trip for two to Miami. Spin the wheel of wishes. You can win loads of cash for Christmas. CIBC First Caribbean. Win with your approved loan. Visit CIBC FCIB slash Wheel of Wishes for more information. Conditions apply. Wherever you're headed. The Custom Computers know-how team is standing by to help guide you in the East and the West. We now have two convenient locations on Patton Street in Palmdale and our newest store in the Caves Village Shopping Plaza through the Blake Road entrance. Discover the latest products by top international brands and the knowledge you need to unleash tomorrow's technology today. Drop by Custom Computers out East or out West. We're open Saturdays from 10 till 4. Know a company stuck in the Stone Age with papers stuck to the ceiling and just about nothing getting done? Don't let your business get left behind. Go digital and ditch the papers. At Play-Doh Alpha Design, we create custom software to meet all your digital needs, saving you time and helping you make money. Give us a call today at 812-2195 or visit PlayDoAlpha.com. It's time to ditch the papers and let us help you go digital. At Play-Doh Alpha Design, we're the leaders of digital transformation. Struggling to repay your loan? Let us help you get on track with payment terms that suits your financial situation and improve your credit score and credit report with the Bahamas Credit Bureau. Inquire about our restructured loans today. Call us at 356-7764. 
This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Wake up, wake up today. Wake up, it's a new day. Yeah, wake the start up. of the start of the new way. You know that this is the start up. of the yeah. end of the old way. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We're streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at MorningBlend969 or Facebook.com slash MorningBlend969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC 422-4796. Standard text rate supply. Once again, I'm Dwight Strom. Join me now, Chester Robards. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Great to have you with us. Glad to be here. Got a lot to get to this morning. Yesterday we told you uh, about the GCFI, the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute conference is going on right here. Um, people from all over the region here for that at Atlantis. And um, this morning we're going to talk more about fisheries, the state of fisheries in the country. We've got two fisher, uh, fishermen going to be joining us and talking about challenges they're facing yeah. this morning. Later in business... We're talking with Access Accelerated Small Business Development Center, a uh, meeting two of the participants in the Survival of the Pitchest competition. Yeah, That's an interesting name. Um, we're going to talk with them this morning. That's coming up. But let's begin with what else is in the news. In the news, uh, just a couple things I want to mention that's in the papers today. So the big headline in the NASA Guardian, uh, Halkitas, high food prices not permanent. Government expects costs will fall when inflation eases. Hmm, Halkitas Why saying, say that? Mm-hmm, he's saying, he said yesterday, so we don't su- subscribe to the argument that once it goes up, it never comes down. We encourage all suppliers and people who sell products to the public to not surrender and say, well, that's the new normal. These things go in cycles. Recall a few months ago, the price of eggs, when it leveled out, the prices came down. We expect that to be the same for, um, I guess, where did that go? For everything, for everything. Mm, okay. Um, well, wait, why do you say that? Yeah, because a couple of days ago, Robert said the exact opposite. Right. The prices are up and will be up indefinitely. But, but he said that about something specific, too, though. Mm-hmm. He didn't say that about everything. Right, not everything. It was what, the holiday staples. Yeah. Yeah. But but he talked about farmers, and so even if we don't subscribe to something, we don't get to be a part of the subscription. <laughs> we just got to take it mm. when it comes. Yeah, yeah. And unless and we want to protest poultry farmers in the U.S., we'll go, we'll get far with that, right? But anyway, his well, point was well, you could if you encourage his more point, local. But his point was that the poultry farmers' price has gone up. Yeah, and he doesn't expect them to lower their prices. Right, right, right. Oh, boy. Um, yeah, and um, Halki just gave the example of eggs, but um, Roberts talked about that as well. He said, yeah, the prices came back down, but we're expecting them to go back up by the end of the month. And um, eggs, eggs was also, um, like, we understood the problem with eggs. There was a big bird flu, bird flu thing. Right, yeah. And, you know, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a I don't know where factor. the shortages are coming from, if there are any, but. Right. Wow. All right. So, um, uh, 
take it with a grain of salt, I guess. We'll see what happens, but um, be prepared. So be prepared. You've been warned. But his argument is is bordering on whether or not when the prices change at the port, if local distributors are bringing their prices down. This is how key does he talk about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So and that their, is, so their that prices is. for importation have gone down. Are yeah. they going to pass it on? Yeah. No, so that's a very interesting point there too. Yeah. Um, because some will be very happy to say, well, that's the new normal and our prices are high because of the global challenges we're facing when there's no reason to keep it that high. But the public is much more educated, better educated than they've been at, at any point before now. And I think they will know fully well where prices are in other parts of the world and that this doesn't make sense if w- there were a merchant to do something like that. So yeah. we'll see. So just letting you know to uh, be prepared. All right. Um, and the retailers, the fuel retailers are back at it. Uh, this is um, how many years we've been talking about this? Are we going on to two now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are two. Stall talks, desperate, same words over and over. Um, what's going to happen? Hmm. Well, the uh, association plans to meet this week to discuss their issues and hope to soon see the talks resume with the government. Well, I mean, at some point you're going to have to, I mean, I don't want them to act, but you're just going to be talking like this indefinitely. That's very silly, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so do what you have to do. Won't be pretty, but you're looking kind of weak. Weak. I hmm? mean, I mean, you know, like that word. They are us too, right? They hmm? gotta, oh. they gotta live within the things they do affect their families and mm-hmm. friends, and so I don't know. Yeah. Well, Balance, right? I don't know. Obviously, the government's not taking them seriously, and because not everybody's saying the same thing, right? We've got a, a, a group right. within. Yeah that sector that is not speaking like this. And I think we know the reasons why. Well, yeah. But, um, but so they are thinking, well, fine, you all could do that, but our friends over here won't do it. Right. And so we're going to be straight. That's because those friends have other avenues probably for income and revenue. And mm. These guys own a station or two. Right, and exactly. Yes. So what do you think of all of that, folks? Give us a call, 323-6232, 325-4316, Call us toll-free, 242-300-5720. Tweet us, Facebook us, text us, 422-4796. Wow. All right. So I want to mention something. Um, this is you don't uh, have to ask me, mm-hmm. you can do it. Oh, okay. Um, it's in the I, was that a question? I just <laughs> letting you know with the upturn. Oh, you don't have to tell me you want to mention it, you can just do it. <laughs> oh, okay, just yeah. letting you be, be prepared for this. All right, so time's changed and everybody's up early, er, it seems. Oh, okay. Um, and um, waking up to do foolishness on the streets oh, in Providence, oh. you wake up early to to drive two miles per hour because you're up early. It's crazy. But we got some real issues, folks, um, on the streets, and we need to address this. Um, This morning alone, I've seen, like, oh, man. So the early risers, because the sun is up in your face. Right. And it's hot early. Um, And the driving slow, and you get past an area like this. But this was what the holdup was? Like, nobody's, once you get past the area, like... It was one car that might have been broken down or one person turning into a corner or somebody going for coffee, and that just blocked up the whole area for half a mile. But once you get past, hmm. What are you going to do? I mean... No, no, no. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. There's nothing wrong. No? Okay. Um, and um, we've got... Is, is it my imagination, or was there a rule that said that heavy equipment and tractors and all those things weren't supposed to be on the streets during rush hour times. Is that just a thing we say, but is that I've what never you heard never heard that before? No. F- folks, help me out here. Wasn't that a thing? Like they, were, they weren't supposed to be during the rush hours. Only time. No? Okay. Can we make that a law? Because there's no reason for tractors to be on the street during rush hour, right? I mean, why, why are you here? And, and then why are they always on? Do you drive by them? They're always on 
cell phone while they're driving uh-huh. the, tra- the tractor. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Every time. I can't see inside their cabs. No, no, not those then. The ones with the... They're like riding on a giant giraffe, so you can mm. see them very clearly. Yeah. The ones who are actually on a tractor. Yeah, yeah. What oh, do you not think I meant? Being, I thought they were tractor Towing a tractor? on a trailer. Yeah. No, no, no. On the tractor. Oh, the ones that actually move five miles per hour. Right. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Why, why are they on the... Like, the they got the pedal to the metal and they just cruise. Yes. They, they're always on the phone for real. Always on the phone. Yeah. Because yeah. they're going so slow, what else they got to do? Do they steer it with the phone or something like that? Is it that how... Yeah, I still understand. But I just need that. I need to understand. They, what that's they, about. they got to go 15 miles on this island and they're going five miles per hour. You do it, Ma. Mm. They got nothing else to do. <laughs> Those and then, radios do it. <laughs> and I hope, folks, it's cleared up um, uh, at uh, one of the worst intersections on the island. No, not the not East West Highway Marathon, but um, further up um, Prince Charles, Robinson, and Soldier. Chaos always. On mm. um, the light, it was flashing. Oh boy. And so there was my, hopefully it's clear up by now. Let, let, text us if it isn't, 422-4796. But um, obviously, because I didn't learn it here, um, you need, you need do to, people know that red flashing and amber flashing mean two different things? And if you're on the amber flashing, you do have the right to proceed with caution. But the red flashing people need to calm down well, and hold their horses until they can find stop. a way out. Yeah, Stop pretty much. That, yeah. You don't have the right to bully yourself in on the red flashing light. Yeah. Um, so, seriously, I mean, we... It, it, well, it's just like a four-way stop here. Nobody knows how to use it. 99% of people don't, yes. And they cruise into the stop oh, no, and people, just keep going. Fly through. Oh, some fly, fly through. through. Yeah. yeah, but most people... In the States, it's called a rolling violation mm, yeah, when you yeah. don't actually stop the car yeah. and you just keep going. We, we really need a massive education campaign for everybody on the streets. Every single, we, every few feet, you notice a major, major violation. Are police pulling over these um, parents or guardians who don't have kids in child seats? Because that is chronic. Pulling them over for what? Exactly. Oh, okay. For what? Yeah. For the law. Oh, for okay. breaking the law. Well, we're getting half the country locked up. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's 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 wild out there every day, and the pedestrians don't care, and the drivers are doing their own thing. They'll slam brakes for a pedestrian who has no business being there, and it's just wild, wild stuff. And um, we really got to do something, and again, I've said it before, if, if the authorities aren't prepared to do it, then uh, some of uh, the private sector needs to come together and let's do this, start this campaign. But let, let's hear what you have to say about that, folks. 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259. Toll free, 242-300-5720. Um, let's take this call. Good morning, call. You're on the air. Morning, Glenn. Good morning to your guest. Hi, good morning. Your guest is right. Before we stop, would solve all of this. No, no, he didn't say that. <laughs> he did not say that. Well, it really would go a long way in solving the conditions we have on the road when not the in, light is out. Not in this country. Mm-mm. But I'm saying we're not educated to that level where I need to know that the person who I met there first, I just simply let them go. Okay. And I mean, well, well, people are very selfish here. That's that's the biggest part oh, of the problem. Oh, see, now you're going there. But you see, that's the, here is the deal. We stuck to the cell phone because we're not breastfed. No. So now this phone is 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 us. Is well, you know, we just we just can't let it go. We See need now, to realize that. I, I I know I'm gonna regret it. I'm going to regret <laughs> this. But but what what do you mean by that? Well, no, I'll, I'll leave that alone. But we can't you do that. I get we, no, we need no, to know. No, but seriously, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> there's got to be something that's causing us to be so attracted to <laughs> everything else other than the reality. <laughs> the, the, the reality is sticking you in the face, but you're looking at something else. But right, what we need to do when you become mayor. Mm-mm. Look, this sweet potato is the easiest thing to grow because it actually feeds itself. Just put it in the ground, make sure it's warm, so when this thing comes down and we can't find food and the people are telling you, guess what, I don't have it in the store, you could have it in your backyard. And that's easy. It's the easiest thing to grow because pests don't bother with it. Uh, you just need to make sure it stays warm and you got sweet potato and it's better than that white Irish potato. Mm, that so is true. when you become mayor, mm-hmm. you could have a competition. 
where you can see who could grow, because they do it everywhere else. They have competitions to get people inspired to feed themselves, so people need to be inspired to grow. Who could grow as many sheep potatoes in certain square footage? I know Sparky would love to be a part of that. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I don't know if I'm interested in that. I pray that it does happen, though, that someone can be the mayor oh, of... of uh, so of, some sweet potato. Of, uh, <coughs> uh, of some part of New Providence, Nassau. Um, but um, but we don't need that. You don't need local government for that one. We can May, do this. Right, mayor of the city. No, please stop. Don't that legislation soon come. Mm, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we don't need any government people for that. We could do that right now. Do that right now. All right, so people are telling us the lights are still blinking. Yes, Robinson and Soldier and uh, Prince Charles. So yeah, the lights did go out last night. Well, this morning, I should say. Where? Well, I know some people something. were telling us this. Well, this is western ish. So, yeah. Or highway ish, oh, garden okay. hills ish. Yeah. But, um, but that's the only one that was off. Oh, yeah. Uh, blinking. Yeah. Mm. Not the one at the mall. Mm. Well, thank God for that. Well, that's another disaster that's area. Right. Yeah, it's a disaster when the lights are working. <laughs> um, so, folks, again, red flashing doesn't mean go. You like to waste your breath, don't you? I mean, people don't seem to know, and yet they keep doing it. I, they, did you? Even if they know, will they care? Some of us do. People should know that it's dangerous to have your child in the front seat in or your in lap. your lap because you hit the brake and they hit the wall, the firewall. The airbag alone. Exactly. Mm. Wow, let's take some more calls. Good morning. might not have an airbag. <laughs> anyway. Uh, caller, you on the air. Good morning. Are you there? No. Okay, let's take the other call. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hi. Good, good morning, m- Dwight. How are you doing? Doing well. Yeah, I'm calling you from St. Petersburg. Yeah, check it out, man. You know, like I used to work for a rental company, which we uh we used to rent out uh, payloaders and forklifts. And, and if we had to get those construction material to a job, we'd get them on the road as early as possible before the traffic hit. Mm-hmm. And they'd be on semi-trailer. Okay, so truck uh, payloaders and all the forklifts and stuff, they don't be driving on the road. You could, you know, some people take charge and do it late at night, but all those are supposed to be on trailers. Mm. And over here, with the four way stop sign over here, if, if the traffic light is out, nobody has to ride away. You know what I'm saying? But if some people think that they have the, the yellow light, they could. I done seen a school bus one time because they, they got the yellow light, they ran through the light. It was a major crash. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And, and the thing about it in the Bahamas, you know, if the police don't enforce the laws, people are going to always break it, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So they got to they, they gotta enforce the laws, man. You know what I'm saying? Because we know nowhere in the world. It's too, like I say, they need a better public service system in the Bahamas, man. It shouldn't take you an hour to get from one part of the island to the next, man. It's, the island is too small, man. You know, they, they need to do something, major something, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know? Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Remember, they did try the four-way stops a couple times Who? here. Where? Here. Um, Forward? I think in the, um, mm-hmm. it's not the Grove. Um, Coconut Grove. But just east, like Pinedale, Pine, right? That area there, there was a four-way stop. That oh, was okay. a well, complete well. disaster. They had to quickly abandon that. We still can't use roundabouts, and we got a thousand of them. Yeah. So well. This person says that they don't think that's a law here about the uh, heavy equipment. Well, clearly not. Did I dream it? They're saying, but it's a thing in Freeport. Oh, it's, it's, oh really? Yeah, okay. Um, they don't play that over there. Um, you sure? Got that. Why but would I? I'm in agreement with the colleges now. Mm-hmm. Even if it's not a law, I think all heavy equipment should be carried on a trailer. Mm, yeah, yeah. Especially if you're going five miles per hour. Hey, and that's all you can go. Um. Let's take this call, then we'll get to a whole lot of text messages. A lot of you texting in. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi. I just called to say that I'm very disgusted about the war in Gaza. And I got some information that they really want to take over Gaza so that they can um, have a competition to the Swiss Canal. And the rest of it, but the most concern is about the disproportionality and the wanton loss of human life. Yeah. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. You're welcome. It. Okay. Mm. okay. 
All right, let's get your text messages. Obviously, this has lit a fire on all of you. This is the fastest uh, we've gone to. This is a lot. Oh, boy. Okay. Um, mm, what? <laughs> oh, so you're trying to... <clears throat> They, oh, El this, is, this is politics here. Was the chief passport officer working for free, or did he file a false declaration? Because according to the declaration, he has uh, no type of bank account. Who, what now? Well, okay. Um, uh, oh, my goodness. What's happening this morning? Okay. When the prices go high, we can go low. If we ate three pieces of meat, then only eat one. <laughs> And, and you should. Oh, we go low on consumption. I think that's what they mean. Okay. <laughs> okay. What, what do you, I mean, other than Christmas, you regularly eating three pieces of meat, people? Well, that explains a lot. Three but, slices of meat. No, I don't think three types. I think they mean three I types. Don't know they mean. Oh, is that a joke? No, I don't think it's a joke. Some people, you know, some people have two meat every Sunday. And then they have the leftovers on Monday, the two meat again. And then they go to lunch and then dinner and then. P- p- practically four, um, but yeah. So I mean, I know it's a lot of people, but um, but you gotta wonder if that makes sense. Uh, this person says here the government talks about tourism record numbers, but the beach era, the beaches are okay. It's just random text day today. Okay, I see. But the beaches are dirty as heck. Tourists are complaining all the seaweed and and on the beach and at Western Esplanade. Yeah, I don't know if we have a beach cleaning program here, really. Right. There's a lot of, I know some people, I've seen some random people just picking up seaweed for their own purposes, I suspect. I don't think they're part of a cleanup crew, but um, otherwise, I don't know. I would never, so litter, like human litter, I would call dirt. You wouldn't call seaweed? Seaweed that but naturally occurs? That doesn't look good though. I don't care how it looks, it's not dirt. Anyway, that's just me. Mm, interesting. Go pick up seaweed. It makes I mean, good mulch. You know, when they sell the place, the beaches look pristine. Yeah, because they, they sell it to people who have tractors with things that. What? No, I don't mean like that. Beach, as in when they promote tourism. Oh. Yeah. What? Yeah, of course they do. <laughs> right. You don't see you don't, seaweed. You don't send photographs of a seaweedy uh, beach. But then that's all you get. <laughs> That's like, life. What, no. Sometimes no. when you go on vacation, you in get that, rain. In, <laughs> Sometimes in you other get places, storms. People are there to clean up the beach, as in with everything. Make it look as pretty as it does in the pictures Sometimes that you, you saw. get stung by jellyfish. That's just that's nature. Different. We, they don't work for the government. We understand <laughs> that. That's fine. Um, <laughs> wow. By the way, it was brought to my attention, and I went out there and um, and, and to take a look Um on Sunday, downtown, on uh, the wharf. Wharf? You've been out there recently? When the yeah. ships are in town, especially. Mm, yes, I have. Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's looking interesting. As in? So there are a lot of vendors on the sidewalk. Lots right. of stalls. The people who can't quite access. Oh, the, on stalls on the sidewalk. Yeah. Mm. And so it was like, you know, like a, one of those so markets th- so in the Middle East. So there is no sidewalk anymore? No, no. But people are all walking in the road. And right. the cars are still allowed to access it. Yeah. But more than cars are the, the mopeds and the four-wheelers yeah. that are doing their own thing. Right. They're driving north, east, west, yeah, south yeah, yeah. on top of other people. Right. Um, they don't care and shooting down in front of you. Um, so it just felt like I was in, I've said it before, like in a post-apocalyptic movie with just like people selling stuff and people walking and, and uh, throwing stuff around and yeah. bikes everywhere and noise and yeah. like, huh. and then the big fence and the beautiful and, yeah. port behind it. And like, it, okay, it, this is a <clears throat> weird feeling. It's probably become a little more desperate because they can't access the people inside the port. It's a good word. Desperate. I mean, that's, that's, that's what I felt. This that's what I felt desperate. too when I went down there because they were really aggressive no, I'm not just talking about the people. The I'm not talking about the people. I'm just talking about the whole... The feeling is the aggressive, feeling though. It's just desperate. Oh, okay. I, just get I shouldn't have used that word. No, it's you perfect. You look like you... <laughs> I'm about to... It's perfect. So if that's what we're going for, for downtown Nassau... Well, no. I mean, so, so the port did its thing to control what the port looks like. But, but, and, but this, and, ship- and this is... Passengers and this experience. is the reason, as you keep saying, mm-hmm. we need now a body to 
run downtown yes. so that the rest of it acts the way that the port private entity mm -hmm. wants the inside of its gate to act. Yes, and preferably elected officials that we can remove when they act stupid right. and not an appointed body that got a contract right. from some MP or cabinet minister. Right. Um, who who, we, will, who will allow the people who are acting desperate on the street to go to their MP and say, right. I like how they treat me exactly. down here. Exactly. I want to do what I want to do down here. And then they make a call and say, just let him, yeah, yeah. Just let him do what he got. Be, but you know they're heading in that direction because that's all we like to do around here. That's, that's how we get votes, Yeah, right? but it's going to be the same foolishness, folks. A downtown management body that gets a, right? Okay, you're looking for foolishness. But anyway, you've been warned. Um, this one here says, I just drove by two tractors with a long line of cars behind them. Of course. Of course. <laughs> two tractors. As a parade? This one says, not to be read on air. <coughs> <laughs> what? Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Wow. Okay. He's, re he's listening to voice notes while on air. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're reading. <laughs> this um, might be a good uh, no, it's fine. line for the show. This one says, I know what you mean, Dwight. I live in the East and constantly see this backhoe driver on the phone on a daily basis. We can hear you. We're going to oh, take a break soon, bad. sir. We're we'll take a break soon. Is, is it an Seems emergency? Like a very important voice. Yeah, they, they know where you are. <laughs> um, it's not just one. So let's not blame one person. It's many, all, all of them. This person says, I think a downed or inoperable traffic light at an intersection is first come, first go, like a four-way stop. That's not what this was, though, Texter. Um, and yeah, perhaps, right? But this is, the lights are, are up, right. but they are flashing, and the colors aren't for pretty. A red flashing light is different from an amber flashing light. And then also, why is not a officer immediately stationed at one of those intersections, especially in the mornings, mm -hmm. to deal with the traffic flow. You mean when there is an issue? Yeah. Or you mean just in general? No, no when the light's flashing. I mean, right. somebody needs yeah, to direct traffic. Knows, right? The somebody light can't direct this. traffic anymore. Right, yeah. Yep. And bring your ticket book as soon as you get there because you could start collecting money right away. Mm. Mm -hmm. This one says here, the light is still off. Pure chaos this morning. An officer needs to be permanently stationed there. Permanently. Permanent. Yeah. Light on or off. Wow. You can guarantee someone runs that daily. Mm. Yeah, but how come nobody is there yet? Yeah, what? And have police passed that intersection? And then, you know, I often wonder, like, okay, will, will someone have, will somebody have notified the traffic police yet? Um, do I need to call? How does it work? Can I'm driving. Am I get a ticket for calling the traffic police to come deal with the situation, right? Um, I got to look for the number, and then they could tell me this is the wrong one, and all this stuff. And how does this work? Uh, maybe yeah, but you you can't tell me that not one police officer vehicle going to work or whatever whatever it is has passed that intersection for the for the morning and said, "Oh, I, somebody need to get out here." <laughs> yes, they did, and they did nothing. That's my point. Right. They said, "Wait, traffic, traffic police need to deal with this. Speed <laughs> off. That's what they do. Huh? <laughs> That's all we all did. This, this is what we all do. Um, this person says, can we stop? This really is random text boarding. We should just do that one day. Fine. Random uh, text. Uh, don't y'all do that sometimes? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the open line show a random text? Day? Not on morning blend. Oh, okay. um, can we stop changing this time, please? I was used to waking up at six and being able to drive and listen to my music and just flow through since the time changed the sun tricks people and people will get up to flood the streets i miss the good times See, it happens the first week or so um by the end of november everyone's gonna be back into their foolishness especially when you approach the end of the school year and the kids don't have to go to school and not so give it some time um but you're right the first couple of weeks are horrible and i do hope this is like, in fact i've decided i'm not going to change my watches I'm keeping that. My watch changes itself. Actually, I thought oh, it got, didn't change, but now it's watch. changed. No, it's not a smart watch. I mean, it is smart, it? but it's not a smart watch. Oh, you got a ghost. I don't know how it works. No. I never read the book. No. Did you sure you had the right time before? <laughs> that doesn't make, How did your watch change itself? I don't know. That's a smart watch. It's not. Is smart it watch. digital? It's digital. Yeah, yeah, okay. That doesn't mean it's smart. Yeah, well. Yeah, no. Um,. So, you know, let's, let's, but we're not going to do it unless the U.S. does it, which is very sad and says a lot we're, about weren't us. Weren't they not supposed to do it this year? There some, I think it's mainly Republicans, are oh. trying, and that's fine. They're trying to, some, right. some are trying to keep it right. um, to permanent daylight time. Right. Plenty of people want permanent 
Standard time, though. We need to eradicate them somehow. Uh, but <laughs> permanent daylight time, yeah. um, and a, you know, I don't mean anyway. You mm, uh, or help them to see the light. <clears throat> so daylight time is so that the sun doesn't seem to set at five o'clock. Right. You're making something that's the only purpose. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> um, the sun saying. wouldn't set at five even in winter. Right. It would set at six thirty or yeah, so. Yeah. Um, but right now, five twenty-five, five thirty. Yeah. It's dark. Yeah. And 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 five thirty a.m. You need sunglasses. Yeah, exactly. Some people like that in the morning. Yeah, no. The walkers, I'm sure. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Your walkers. <sighs> this one says, "I thought the law was that they were supposed to be on a flatbed and driven to their location, not themselves, not them driving in the road, slowing things down." Is it law though? We got to find it. Got to yeah. find it. Mm-hmm. I'm sure somebody can text in and tell you whether or not it's law. <laughs> I hereby nominate Dwight, and they have, for some reason, Quincy Strawn. <laughs> That's not my middle name. <laughs> to start the petition to end this dreadful daylight saving time, change back and forth for once and for all. Hey, well, yeah, yeah, I, I'll sign every single signature if, if needed. Um, but, um, yeah, we need permanent daylight time. Daylight time. Okay. Um, um, every morning, it's a Carnageddon. Uh, people driving on the wrong side of the road, forcing themselves out of corners, driving roundabouts wrong. The people who blow their horns as soon as the light turns green. Fun times. Mm. People driving people's rental cars as if they want to crash them That's another every thing. day. That is another thing. Let me ask you something. What percentage of the people driving the SD cars are new to the Bahamas? Like they just got here yesterday because no, no. something is wrong. You, these you, are people you born and bred here. You can tell the driving difference. like lunatics. You can tell the difference Who, between they 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 either drive four miles per hour, or four hundred miles per hour. Yeah, like n- they do the complete opposite of what they're supposed to be doing, and it's getting worse, especially the hatchback SD cars. But you can tell. I mean, clearly these rental companies who purchase these mm, let's talk about them these these small Japanese um, whatever kind of cars mm-hmm. that they could replace at a whim. Mm. What's don't wrong care that? how they're oh, driven. Gonna say. Because if they, like, I would look at the, the person who's coming to rent my car and say, you were going to tear well, this This must be their cousin. But maybe. I don't know. Or their twin. I don't understand. Why would you or rent they, to this? Because it's so cheap that they have so many of them that they don't care. And you keep it for 10 months? Yeah. Well, they can't. What, what can they do with it when some of these people bring them back? Jeez. <laughs> Just keep this. Yeah. Just keep that. Okay. Something has to be done. Um, I think the other day I was you mean like chased traffic enforcement and stuff mm. like you know people patrolling and doing things. Some would say it must be me, but in one stretch um, and on different roads, three hatchback SDs either nearly crashed into me, nearly chased me off the road. Yeah, I, I don't know. Drove on top of me. It was everything. It was like what is going on? And uh, okay. People are, are risking life and limb in these tiny little cars, and some of them SDs, to overtake one car in a line of traffic to get one car ahead. And they're coming out on the other side of the street while cars come in. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is this idiot yeah. doing? I'm not, these people are crazy. I'm now quite terrified of every hatchback. Um, and I don't mean to make light they're of They're giving the people a bad rap, the yeah. ones who drive mm-hmm. nice. Okay. In their hatchbacks. Um, I, 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 I don't mean to make light of the horrible situation going on, but um, hatchbacks in the Bahamas, that's an H word, like Hamas and Hezbollah, a terrorist organization, and something has to be done. Well, people from Jamaica will tell you the same thing. Oh, really? But the, in, we Jamaica, gotta do in Jamaica, they trick out the hatchbacks, and they, they like crotch rockets. Okay. <laughs> crotch? That's what they call a bike, I guess. But they move as fast. <laughs> they move as fast. That's what they call a bike? Yeah, a crotch rocket. That's hilarious. Yeah. They move just as fast, though. I get it. I mean, crotch rocket. Yeah. What? You never heard of it? Never heard of it. That's hilarious. Wow. Okay. Um, remember the yellow boxes? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> We've erased them from the street <laughs> with the tires. Actually, oh, I mean, like, nobody cared. And I was sitting just a couple days ago at a light. And the people in front of it just couldn't move. And I'm crossing the intersection. I'm like, I'm not going to block this up. Watch how many people blow their horn at me. But then a little space opened. Yeah, and yeah, I squeezed yeah, myself yeah. in. I don't do and it. every car came behind me and blocked up the street. Yeah. They yeah. didn't give. Yeah. Two traffic lights about that. Soldier Road and Blue Hill Road. Mm-hmm. 
Blue Hill Road is. I mean, something coming wrong. down the hill is terrible. Yeah, because the lane merges into one I was, and then goes I back was into on two. Blue Hill, Blue Hill heading into um, Carmichael, and the people don't care. I don't know why they did that to that street. Uh, this is on both sad. sides. It merges into one and then back into two. It's like a, a what do you call it? hourglass. <laughs> <laughs> You will be there an hour. <laughs> um, people driving around unlicensed and uninsured, and police don't want to get serious and start impounding cars of repeat offenders. If your car hasn't been licensed for three years, it should be an automatic impound. Public buses just stop in the middle of the street and create their own bus stops. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Taxi drivers really be carrying on silly, too. Oh, they're worse. They're actually worse. They need to remove these stupid roundabouts, and they need to fix the timing for the traffic lights. I'm disgusted about the war in Gaza as well. Okay. okay. Um, the roundabouts, the problem is the people, not the roundabouts, yeah. um, right? And we do need proper signage at the roundabouts because not all of them are the same, yeah. and there needs to be rules. Right lane must only do this. Left lane must also, only do that. Also, you don't... You can analyze the traffic in the roundabout before you reach the roundabout. I don't think people know that. People stop. They, you don't have to stop. In the middle of the roundabout? No, at the top of the roundabout. Oh, oh right. Uh, I'm doing that every morning. I see, like, you can see that no one is coming, but all these cars, like four cars in front of me have stopped. Stop. And I'm like blowing my horn, go, 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 go. Nobody is coming. What are you doing? You can analyze the traffic no, in the roundabout very, before you get to it, very and you don't have to stop Something at the top wrong. of the roundabout. Something is very wrong. We have, like, I mean, we, what is the average education of, I don't know. for road users? I understand is people are F, afraid. F average? I understand people are, there are some older drivers who are afraid, and they will, ha- they will stop. But, mo- you know, you don't have to, I'm just saying. Also, the people who continue to juke right, to turn left, who are these people? And which planet did they learn to mm. drive on? Oh, so that reminds me. I need to find the article. It came across, but I um, on my um, as a notification. They're having issues in the states. So remember, they drive on the right. Mm-hmm. So you know, many states allow you to turn right on the red, like how we turn left on the right. right? But they're having issues. They're saying there's more accidents, more pedestrians getting hurt, and now there's a movement to stop it. Um, as soon as I find the article, I'm going to read it for you all. Um, but just as we've moved to this, and it's chaos. Left turn on red is really challenging here and we knew it was going to so be so is like right that. turn on red well and well, that's at, a different story right at shirley street and, and mackie street oh it's many other places <laughs> where they're doing that mm. but anyway, we'll pick this up on the other side a whole lot more morning blend coming up after the news stay with us
Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We're streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at Morning Blend 969 or Facebook.com slash Morning Blend 969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC 4224796. Standard text rate supply. And now at 824, it is time for another check of your weather for today, brought to you by Easy Car Sales, reminding you that with the cost of gas today, it's time to go green. Drive an electric vehicle from Easy Car Sales, save big on fuel and maintenance costs, take a spin, and find out how to dump the pump at easy242.com. So here's what's happening in the weather. We've got a high-pressure system supporting a moderate to fresh breeze. That's moving eastwards across the Bahamas. Beachgoers in the central and southeast Bahamas should be alert due to the slight risk of rip currents in and along north and east coast beaches. For all areas today, expect partly mostly sunny and warm conditions, breezy in the central and southeastern islands with isolated showers becoming fair and mild with a passing shower tonight. Small craft in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise caution. Temperatures today getting up to around 86 Fahrenheit, 30 Celsius. Overnight lows tonight getting down to 73 Fahrenheit, 33 Celsius. In your extended outlook, expect increasing winds and building seas as we approach the weekend while the high-pressure system continues to build and moves east across the country. So for Thursday, variably cloudy and warm, breezy in the central and southeast Bahamas with isolated showers. uh, That's Thursday, and then Friday, partly sunny, warm, and breezy with isolated showers. In the tropics, things are quiet still. uh, Tropical cyclone formation are expected during the next seven days. That's your morning blend weather check. Weather check also brought to you by First Online Insurance, powered by Bahamas First. At firstonlineinsurance.com, you can choose your agent, get a quote, and buy your home or auto insurance policy 100% online, firstonlineinsurance.com. Got another check of traffic for you this morning. Uh, brought to you by RBC. Start your home journey with an RBC mortgage today. In your real-time traffic, a number of hot spots to tell you about. We've got uh, Prince Charles Drive, Robinson Road. So uh, near Elizabeth Estates, you're going to be seeing issues there. And the intersections, the major intersections like Fox Hill Road and Beatrice Avenue. And especially as you get closer to uh, Soldier Road uh, and uh, from Soldier, where it becomes Robinson Road, straight up to East-West Highway. Heavy traffic for you westbound. You're not moving much there at all. And um, hopefully it is resolved, but it might not be by now. But um, uh, flashing lights at Soldier and Prince Charles Robinson Road, that's causing some traffic nightmares there. Or it was earlier this morning. It looks like it's still issues at that intersection. So keep that in mind. We've got uh, Independence Drive, heavy traffic both directions, east and westbound, between the roundabouts at East Street and Blue Hill Road. Blue Hill, heavy traffic as you approach that roundabout, heading northbound and uh, near Carmichael and St. Vincent as well. Plus, we've got uh, lots of congestion at the Zion boulevard Calpen intersection with Blue Hill and South Beach Road. For the west, we've got Mount Butler Highway, of course. Heavy traffic from well south of the Fire Trail roundabout straight up to the uh, Tawny Glooms Darling Highway roundabout. Traffic back to belong Tawny Glooms Darling Highway as well, westbound. And at the Six Leg roundabout, northbound and eastbound on JFK Drive. Farrington Road seeing a bit of congestion as well. But uh, once again, uh, Glassville not looking bad for you, but it's JFK Drive along Lake Cunningham. Heavy traffic for you if you're heading eastbound toward that roundabout as the traffic assistance is paying off for the Gladstone Road folks, but not so much for you guys on JFK. And um, uh, Carmichael busy as well, westbound to Coral Harbor Road. That's your real-time traffic and your hot spots this morning. 
Any morning blend traffic alert brought to you by RBC. Visit rbc.com slash take 60 seconds to connect with RBC today. It's a Christmas wish for all of you. Get an all fee loan from RBC. It's true. This Christmas, your wish can come true with a no fee loan from RBC. You have five chances to win up to five thousand dollars Christmas cash. It's a Christmas wish for all of you. Get an all fee loan from RBC. It's true. Learn more at rbc.com slash Caribbean slash Christmas cash. Subject to normal lending criteria. Conditions apply. Earning zero interest on your savings at the bank? With as little as $100, you can start earning interest on your money while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank with the Seafeld Savings Express Plan. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at Seafeld, your interest is our interest. Visit Seafeld.com to start now. Seafeld. Growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. There's a new electric vehicle in town. The Jack brand of SUVs, trucks, sedans, and commercial vans. Available only at Easy Car Sales, home of the fully electric vehicle. For a powerful, smooth ride at a fraction of the cost to drive, leave the pump behind and hit the road with Jack. Visit easy242.com to see our brand new Jack models and drop into Easy Car Sales for a test drive. It'll have you singing. Hit the road with Jack, and don't you pump gas no more. What would you do with Explana Trip? Overhaul my wardrobe. With CIBC First Caribbean, you can get comfy with savings on your mortgage cost. Buy or build your home or switch your mortgage to us and get up to U.S. $1,000 off the loan application fee. Up to U.S. $2,000 off home insurance. With up to U.S. $10,000 towards switching costs, your pockets will be comfy too. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash get comfy for more information. Conditions apply. Doctors Hospital has reimagined primary care. We have invested to improve our health system, ensuring that access Accessible, affordable, world-class clinical care is closer to you. We understand that your relationship with a primary care provider shapes the foundation of your overall health. Our new modern primary care facilities are where critical diagnoses and true personalized treatment begins. With locations across New Providence, Grand Bahama, and Exuma, we invite you to experience the doctor's hospital difference. Book your next appointment at clinics.doctorshosp.com. At Winnie's, we are different. We don't just use beef. It's fresh, never frozen. Our burgers are square because we never cut corners. Served hot off the grill with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, onions, and American cheese. We believe in fast food done right. Always serving fresh, never frozen beef. Order a hot, juicy Dave single, double or triple. Made with fresh, never frozen beef. Now only at Wendy's. Different inside and out. Go CIBC First Caribbean. We help you to get what you want this year. Spin the wheel of wishes with a trip for two to Maya. Spin the wheel of wishes. You can win loads of cash for Christmas. CIBC First Caribbean. Win with your approved loan. Visit CIBC FCIB slash Wheel of Wishes for more information. Conditions apply. It's been 35 years years since Custom Computers was founded and we'd like to celebrate that milestone by thanking you, our clients and customers. You've inspired 35 years of expert service and support, partnering with the world's leading brands like HP, Apple and Microsoft. We take pride in setting the bar for what you expect and deserve from a homegrown Bahamian business. We're here to serve you when you need us. So call 396 1101. Custom Computers raising the standard since 1987. You've tried everything. Asus with your mother's cousin, sister's auntie, and even hiding your money under your mattress. But is your money safe? Your Bahamian dollar deposit in a member bank or credit union is insured up to $50,000. If anything happens, your deposit up to the insured value will be returned to you thanks to Deposit Insurance. Visit Deposit Insurance Corporation at www.dic.bf. Protection for your money, guaranteed with DIC. 
Win a vacation for two to Sandals Resort in Jamaica using your RBC Visa credit card in the RBC Gift Yourself, the ultimate getaway promotion. Just spend $1,500 US dollars or local equivalent. Promotion ends on December 18, 2023. Visit rbcultimategetaway.com for more details. It's a Christmas wish for all of you. Get an all fee loan from RBC. It's true. This Christmas, your wish can come true with a no fee loan from RBC. You have five chances to win up to $5,000 Christmas cash. It's a Christmas wish for all of you. Get a no fee loan from RBC. It's true. Learn more at rbc.com slash Caribbean slash Christmas cash. Subject to normal lending criteria. Conditions apply. Take some advice from your Aunt Angie. If you're going to invest in an exotic pet, choose anything but a Norwegian forest cat. Apparently, they will eat all your jewelry. Before you know it, you're racing to the vet when your cat escapes from his carrier and lunges for your earrings. You crash and your cat swallows your pearls. Mm -hmm. But if you're smart, you'll have CG Motor Insurance and get the best comprehensive coverage for the price. Get the best comprehensive coverage for the price. CG Atlantic Insurance Agents and Brokers. Good like that. All benefits are subject to policy provisions, including eligibility at the time of service. Join the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce, SBDC Bahamas, and the live business on Saturday, November 4th from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. at Crypto Isle on East Bay Street. See what's new, sample products, demo services, and shop from a variety of businesses throughout our local communities. We hope to see you at Trade Expo 2023 on November 4th. Admission is free and the event is family friendly. For more information, call the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce at 322-2145. Wherever you are in the world, Cleveland Clinic's world-class care is here for you. From Ohio to Florida to London, Cleveland Clinic treats thousands of patients every year. Ranked number two in the world by Newsweek. You can trust our caregivers to enhance your experience across each step of your treatment journey. For every care in the world, learn more at clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. Chenay's Chesapeake Road Christmas Wonderland is open under the Big Ten. Get your Christmas trees in pink, frosted, green, or white in a variety of sizes. Musical Christmas LED and laser lights. A large variety of tree ornaments. Lighted angels and Santa tree toppers. Bright and lively colored Christmas balls in all sizes. Garlands, wreaths, tree skirts, stockings, and lots more. Add flowers, picks, and decorative mesh to brighten up your home or office this holiday season. And don't forget the toys at Janae's Chesapeake Road. Check our selections online at www.janae.com. Win a vacation for two to Sandals Resort in Jamaica using your RBC Visa credit card in the RBC Gift Yourself, the ultimate getaway promotion. Just spend $1,500 US dollars or local equivalent. Promotion ends on December 18, 2023. Visit rbcultimategetaway.com for more details. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. We are back here with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strong with Chester Robards. Coming up in a few minutes, we're going to be talking, um, well, part two of our discussion from yesterday with the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute conference going on here. Today, we're focusing on what Bahamian fishermen are seeing out there in our waters, getting their perspective on this. That's just in a couple minutes. So we want to get through a lot of the text messages that were sent before, and there are a couple of the stories we want to bring to your attention. Um, but we were talking about the traffic issues and the Many challenges every morning, um, but every let's day. every day, every day. That's right. It <laughs> continues all day long. Um, yeah. Uh, this person says the cameras would solve all these problems. No, well, no. if they if they're working, we and used, if they are, we have cameras. We used to have cameras. There's we still have cameras. cameras. Police but, have cameras on their bodies. Do they, what? Hmm. Do we don't ever see footage, images. Do they end up in court? Yeah. Well, um, uh, we, we need there to be, when you, I'm sure if they're seeing this every day, people run through the lights. Um, there needs to be uh, consequences for it, right? Like you need to get a ticket. Like someone needs to show up at your, wherever you are. We have you on camera running through a red light a whole minute after it turned red. 
you need to be dealt with. Right. right. Um, but that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. This person says here, um, this is C, this is random text day, as I said. How come you, uh... no, that's not the reason why we <laughs> cut him off. You all are hearing, hearing what you want to hear. How come you cut Seattle off when he said yesterday that local government doesn't work in Grand Bahama and you did not acknowledge it? Um, well, because he's right, it doesn't work. That's not why we cut him off. He knows why we cut him off and he's fine with it. He, made, he brought up an example of something and it was like, we know he, what he was trying to say. Um, but you need to listen. You all are hearing things that you want to hear. I don't understand it. But the texter says that Grand Bahama is a good example of local government and how it does not work. It is not, texter. It is not the type of local government that is needed for anywhere in the Bahamas. It is the equivalent of a prefect, a school prefect. They have no authority to do anything um, much at all. At all. It is not the type of local government we're talking about. We're talking about true um, semi-autonomous governance where you do have the authority to make some laws that are going to benefit your people in this area or whatever, and that you can raise your own money um, mm -hmm. and uh, institute your own taxes or not, or whatever, right? Um, things are going to really make a difference for your area. And the way that in this by-election we're hearing these so, uh, pr uh, prospective MPs talk, they, they don't understand their role, clearly. They're saying things that you would expect to hear from a mayor or a uh, uh, governor of an area, um, but uh, they 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 are pretty sure they know that's not how this works. Because yeah. if you go by what they're saying there, then some of the constituencies in your province shouldn't be looking the way they do, right? Because <laughs> yeah. if if an MP can push for this and that and this and that, then why in God's name does this area look like this? Especially when the MP is a cabinet minister. So let's stop playing games. Let's stop playing games. Uh, this person says here, why can't the main intersections of this, on this island have traffic lights with a redundant um, power source? The police always arrive after the, after the fact. Hmm, boy. Um, this one says here, there, there are seaweed cleanup crews. I see them at Montague all the time. Mm. Cool. Oh, okay. Good, good. And some beaches, some other beaches that they need to visit. Um, I just started listening. Which light or intersection are you referring to, please? Are you going to go and help? Um, <laughs> it was that was Prince Charles Robinson Road, uh, Soldier Road, to the was rescue. flashing this morning. But now I read it a whole hour late. Um, but yeah, but there's plenty of others that aren't working. Uh, this one says here, but um, what now? What um, uh, you're all this. Killing going on. You actually like the time change? What? 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 Hmm? What? What? Oh, boy. Okay. Um. Um. We we don't like. I don't like standard time. You? This time is standard time. Yes. Okay, I'm confused. I don't know. How are you confused? I used to like it. I don't like it. When did you like it? When I was in high school. You liked that it was dark at five thirty. Yes. Didn't you like to go outside and play? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Okay. Um, when one needs to get an urgent message to any station, just call police control room 919 or 911, and they can reach those stations by phone or... No, no, no. No, that's not true. I've called many times, and they tell me to call, call 323 some, some, some. Like, but this is an emergency. Can't you help me out? No, no, nope. no, no. Um, in the U.S., they celebrate Columbus Day. Why don't we? What is this? Why is it? Why are you sending me this text? What's going on? <laughs> like, that's definitely random text day. So the best with my mind now. Uh, this person says here, um, I think it was under the Prime Minister Ingram when the large vehicles were mandated to be off the road at a certain time. I know I didn't dream this. I don't remember it. Just need to find the law. Find if it written it down. Exists. Um, and they're like, why can nobody speak specifically to a law? Well, I mean, does anyone pay attention to many of our laws? Mm. Mm. These <laughs> rental drivers! Exclamation! 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 Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. they're really random stuff. Um, it's you, Dwight. I bet all the hatchback SD drivers work for <laughs> BPL. What? <laughs> they're watching you. I'm waiting to hear about the blinking microwave clock tomorrow. Oh no, that's been blinking. That is a. I that, tell you, that person is a troll. If you want the power to go off, <laughs> let me set some clocks by house. Stop the that. power will go off. I'm not changing one of them. It's on daylight time. If I adjust that clock, the power living? is going 
off. You live in the event horizon. I guess. <laughs> if I ever set the clock, the power goes off within six hours. <laughs> your, your house is it's a not my imagination. Black hole of a power. I don't know what it is. <laughs> One day I'm gonna show people. I'm gonna show the Bahamas. I'm gonna set my clocks. Power off everywhere. Uh, when, <laughs> when you open your door, do you hear "Welcome to the Twilight Zone"? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, they, now they're talking about batting the little hatchbacks. Okay, so it's, it's getting worse. But anyway, oh, so that's enough on that. Um, we we know. We, yeah, people tell me we need a whole traffic show, like a real. That's all we talk about on the show. Um, maybe on weekends, a show that just talks about traffic issues. Mm. Mm. All right, so really quickly, we're running out of time for this segment. Um, so um, you know, many people have been asking about this. What is the deal? Did you hear about it? Did we saw the central bank post that the, these notes were? Mm. Um, how did they put it? I wish I had it in front of me. Um, stolen. Stolen. Um, but now we see, according to um, uh, reports, is according to the Tribune, two men accused of stealing more than one million dollars from a bank security car. At an airport last week, were in court yesterday, where they were each granted two hundred fifty thousand dollars bail. The pair are accused of breaking into the rear window of an unattended security vehicle transporting cash for the Bank of the Bahamas to a private airport on November second. So listen to the language there: bank security car, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the vehicle. Mm. Interesting. What was that? Um, uh, yes. And um, where's the rest of the story? Uh, yeah. Um, 34-year-old Oral Roberts and uh, 26-year-old Akeel Holmes were charged with stealing and conspiracy to commit stealing yesterday before Magistrate Kendra Kelly. Holmes faced additional charges of money laundering and receiving. Uh, later the same day, Holmes was allegedly found with $45,000 in cash. After pleading not guilty, the accused were informed that they have to sign in at the Comarca Road Police Station. And uh, the two are expected to return to court for trial on February 20th and 21st next year. Mm. One million. One million. One million. Well, read the part about where the car was. Mm hmm. Uh, a bank security car. A bank security, wait. Car. Central bank security car? No, a, a bank, bank security, car security car at an airport last week. Uh, the pair they accused of in breaking into the rear window the rear of an window. unattended security vehicle. Un- the security vehicle. So it's not an armored vehicle, clearly. Um, well, transporting the cash for the Bank of the Bahamas to a private airport. They were not at the airport. It says something about the airport. Were yeah, they at the airport they're already? At the airport. Mm-hmm. 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 I am very confused. Oh yeah. Did I tell you the story about um, a few weeks ago when I was at a bank and the little hatchback <clears throat> hatchback um, <laughs> was in front of the bank and I saw two guys. They weren't in uniform, but two guys with these long rifles walking out of the bank and they hopped into the back of, of the a hatchback. hatchback. I think it was a march. It could have been a note. Um, and then, you know, when they, cause they were big guys and they had bags of money, I assumed, and they jumped in and the they were leaving a bank. They walked out the bank with the big guns and they hopped, uh, hopped into the car. Did they rob the bank? And they drove off at four miles per hour in the parking lot cause it's, they sat in the bags of money caused it to, you know, and I'm like, wait, was this bank just robbed? I don't know. Why would they jump into a march? Was it an armored march? Maybe that's why it was driving five miles per hour. <laughs> but um, this is what's going on. Security companies really are taking big chances. They're this transporting is vehicle uh, money in, in not, hatchbacks. No, no. Something is very wrong with this place. That is not a security very, company. Oh, that uh, is that a business that just went to get I some I don't know cash? what's going on. I don't know what's going on. That is not a security. That's not a bank. Hiring a security company. Uh, that cannot be that. Okay. Well, it was four of them, but two with the long guns. And they, yeah. So this is crazy. These, uh, yeah, Twilight Zone is right, Chester. Twilight Zone is right. <clears throat> really quickly, this other story that um, something is wrong with this place. Um, this is very disturbing. In the, also in the Tribune this morning. Um, social media complaints over government breakfast provided at schools asking if it's jail food. That's the headline. Mm. So apparently criticism has been leveled at government's national breakfast program on social media 
after images of some of the meals were circulated with some comparing it to jail food and um, other things. Edit. And the S word. Mm. So last week, the ministry posted on social media about the launch of the pilot program at uh, some schools in the Family Islands. The program was created to provide all students at the selected schools with a free nutritious breakfast. And the post, the posts were circulated and forwarded all um, manner of places. But up to press time, there were more than 230 Facebook shares of the ministry's pictures. But numerous users criticized how the food looked saying it looked cold, unpleasant, and too small in portion. These are for children, by the way. Right? Um, uh, terrible they, things that people think were saying. They the food in the photos look cold. Yes. <laughs> okay. That's what the, they were. All right. Well, maybe some mm. of them didn't go to school. Um, uh, pancakes and uh, this is not nice. I, can't, I don't understand. This is what one person said, and somebody said it looked like jail food. And uh, criticizing everything about it. Horrible language. Um, and I really don't understand this. Right, the government's doing something amazing absolutely, here. Absolutely, absolutely amazing here. But Can these, I just ask you, these you, you crazy use, people on social media will criticize crazy. anything. Any, well, because they're trolls, mm. and they are looking for attention. Yeah, but who said nutritious? Well, that's what the government says. Oh, it's supposed to be oh, nutritious, oh, right? Right. Okay. But, the, just but the, some of the language is terrible. With the folks are using, but one person, at least one person, said it was great, and that her son loves it. Um, and it is said great. It's better than nothing. Some of y'all sending these children to school with nothing. That's why they are fighting everyone and ain't doing well in school because they're hungry. The problem is y'all find fault with everything. I commend them for trying to ensure these children at least have one hot meal. Yeah, well, some of them, some person. of them on there complaining that the food ain't enough because they want their child to put some in the in the school bag and bring it back home. Maybe I'm a <laughs> troll. Well. So I don't know what's going on. Some some people feel they have to comment on every single thing. Yeah, um, yeah. And They're again, just trolls. They're just... if you don't have anything nice to say, you can't look and say oh, the lo- the food looks that's cold. Not, that's how not how social stupid media is done. Are you? That's just how social media works. Why should we even give social media any breath? Oh, that's true. A lot of it is probably fake. Wow. All right. Um, so we're gonna leave that there. Um, we're gonna take a break and be back. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio ninety six point nine. What do you do with extra cash? This November 9th through 11th, 2023, the eyes of the world turns to the Bahamas for Ejoli's first annual Believers Missions Conference. to the Mousy Monroe Diplomat Center, Kamaika Road, for strategies and solutions for effective kingdom evangelism and missions training in a 21st century world. The assignment is this year's theme. Dynamic speakers for this event include Evangelist Ricardo Lunar, Evangelist Brian Weller, Dr. Michelle Nichols from the United States of America, Dr. Patif Faria, Jean Heder from Haiti, Dr. Sean McKinsey, Dr. Patrick Roll from Bahamas Faith Ministries International, and President of Alden Johnson Outreach Ministries International, Dr. Alden Johnson. Night sessions are free. The official opening kicks off Thursday, 6 to 9 p.m., day sessions from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Don't miss this important moment in history. Mark your calendar. Miles Monroe Diplomat Center, Carmichael Road, November 9th through 11th, 2023. Be there. You don't gotta stand in line. Pay online. You can pay your premiums on time. Right at Community Doctor. Whether it's life, home, auto, marine, or health, it's all inside your palms. Pay your insurance at Community Doctor. Whether it's life, home, auto, marine, or health, it's life, home, auto, marine, or health. We've got you covered. Right at Community Doctor.
What would you do with extra cash? Plan a trip. Overhaul my wardrobe. With CIBC First Caribbean, you can get comfy with savings on your mortgage cost. Buy or build your home or switch your mortgage to us and get up to US $1,000 off the loan application fee. Up to US $2,000 off home insurance. With up to US $10,000 towards switching costs, your pockets will be comfy too. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash get comfy for more information. Conditions apply. The Water and Sewage Corporation would like to inform the public that East Street will be closed from Friday, November 10th, 20. 2023 at 5 p.m. until Monday, November 13th, 2023 at noon. Please note that during this period, there will be a disruption in traffic flow. Vehicular traffic will be unable to access East Street from Shirley Street to East Hill Street. We apologize for any inconvenience this may cause and sincerely appreciate your patience and understanding. Your cooperation is vital as we work to enhance our infrastructure. Thank you for your understanding and support as we work towards enhancing our community's infrastructure. Too many debt bills? Overdue on loan payments? Improve your credit score and credit report with the Bahamas Credit Bureau. Shrink your debt payments with a debt consolidation loan and built-in savings that pays you 5% interest. Call 356-7764. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. And we're back here with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strong along with Chester Robards. All right, so this is uh, part two of what we were talking about yesterday with the uh, GCFI conference that's going on here, the Gulf and Caribbean Fisheries Institute Conference right here in uh, the Bahamas at Atlantis. And uh, we are very pleased to have back with us the acting director of the Forestry Unit, Danielle Hanek. And also this morning we've got uh, the legendary Prescott Smith with us. And uh, the uh, head of the Bahamas Commercial Fishers Alliance, Adrian LaRota, and we're expecting uh, uh, Dr. Lester Giddens from the Department of Marine Resources as well. Good morning, everybody. Great to have you back. Great to have you with us. Good morning. Good morning, Bahamas. Good morning, Bahamas. Great to be here with you. Adrian LaRota, you're on with us. I'm on, and good morning, Bahamas. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, again, Dr. Giddens. We're hoping he'll join us shortly. Okay, um, uh, so interesting discussion yesterday, and um, this morning we went together the Bahamian f- f- Fishers uh, ex- uh, um, experience on what they're noticing um, out there in our waters. And uh, I know uh, Adrian and Prescott, you talk about this a lot. Um, uh, we had some calls, some people texting to say that they don't know what these folks are talking about. Uh, we don't have a crisis here. Uh, numbers are plentiful. Uh, Kong, Kongs are dying from old age, people said, in some parts of the country. And the, the issue might be New Providence and um, uh, poachers. Is it as simple as that, or are we not paying attention to some other signs? Who wants to start it off? Prescott, you can pull yeah. the mic a little closer to you there. Yes. Um, but when you think of fisheries, and I want to bring it to the public that while the Bahamas hold the nursery system that replenishes in so many countries, it means we also can make policy decisions that continue to destroy these nursery systems internally. So, for example, if I'm given approval to build and tear out mangroves from a conch breeding area, or for other marine life, it means you also have declining marine resources. So we have lots of issues to deal with in those areas, even though we have uh, 
very healthy marine environment overall, mm -hmm. it still does not mean that we don't have challenges, mm -hmm. you say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Adrian, are, are fishermen getting this? Are they understanding that, that um, even though things might be plentiful in certain areas, that doesn't mean there are not problems? Yeah, yes, fishermen understand. I mean, we're the, you know, we, we, again, sorry, good morning, Bahamas, and good morning to uh, other guests in the studio. Um, my brother Prescott and, and uh, um, uh, uh, Ms. Hannock. Um, yeah, fishermen understand what, what, what you know, what we fit, what uh, an impending crisis could be. I mean, there's a lot, always conversations about it that we, that we speak to. But, 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 you know, the issues we may have is because of, a, of an area, a particular area where fishers may, 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 may target, uh, uh, they may not see an issue in those particular areas versus, you know, other areas. So sometimes the conversation could be, you know, could be misinterpreted or, 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 or could be translated uh, improperly, you know. Um, but fishers understand. I mean, we do have a, a, a crisis around New Providence, uh, particularly with conch, but it doesn't mean or doesn't dictate or, or mean that there is a crisis in the country because, you know, most people, when they speak about the Bahamas, they just basically refer to New Providence. Um, but, you know, uh, I can understand why some callers that you would have had yesterday would have said that, you know, we have fish here dying of old age because you have far-flung islands uh, where, where fishing pressure is minimal, okay? Um, so how do we reach that balance? That's where the conversation needs to be directed now. How do we reach that balance to, to basically not uh, redirect fishing pressure, but to basically distribute harvest areas or, har or distribute our harvesting methods so that there is no fishing pressure on a particular uh, location or a particular species in these locations. Mm -hmm. But fishermen do understand with what we could face. Mm. So what does a crisis for conch in New Providence mean? Um, and is that not a sign that um, we could face bigger problems soon? How should we interpret that? But let's put that in perspective. Uh, we currently can go to Bamboo Shack and be like, oh, there's no conch today. Before, that would never happen. And even in terms of your sizes, your portion sizes growing up, I've, I've seen in my lifetime where you would get this heavy, heavy plate of crack conch, and now you, you get this smaller serving. Why? Because of cost and also availability. So that's just putting it in a practical perspective of saying, okay, that is what you're eating. So I think because we could still afford it relatively, people are like, okay, it's not an issue. But the fact is, you, there are days when you go there and they'll be like, oh, there's no conch today. It's not on the menu. So that's an example, because if there wasn't an issue, then you would have conch all the time, mm -hmm. just as a perspective. Mm -hmm. Yes. Fresca. And also, tra I've traveled to every island in the Bahamas, and sometimes we can have individual fishermen who just look at it in terms of as long as it's in my backyard, it's okay. But I get to see it from the entire Bahamas. And I'm always doing research where I ask people in the local communities, they have to go further and further to find these resources. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, many nursery systems are blocked up around the country, and we do have poachers. As I served in the Defense Force, so we have fishing uh, methods of changing. So for example, people coming in our country, breaking out conch and leaving the shells mm -hmm. on the bottom mm -hmm. uh, from Honduras, Dominican Republic, from the United States. Mm -hmm. So we can't turn a blind eye to while we might have this rich resource, we have more marine resources extracted out of our country than even the commercial fishing in the Bahamas through our recreational fishing industry. Mm -hmm. So we have to look at, take all, and then another thing I'd like to point out is, like, let's say Daniel has, has an incredible uh, responsibility but I think that's a responsibility that all Bahamians need to pay more attention to because if you have uh, someone who heads up forestry where all of the nursery systems in the country come under there and you say, well, are these areas being funded properly? Why is it that uh, Ministry of Marine Resources budget never reached 2% 2 in 100 years? What does that mean? You want her and the ministry to do all of this work, but they receive less and less support. And so these are responsibilities that I think every fisherman 
and behemoths have to pay attention to mm. because it impacts all of us. And we can't wait until it completely crashes, like New Providence, and then we talk about solutions. It's too late then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree. I agree hundred. I, uh, I, I agree hundred percent with a few of the points that Prescott made. Uh, I'll, I'll start with the last one first. Uh, budgets. Yes, the government. The government really need to need to reinvest uh, uh, in the third largest economy in this country, in the, the, for the managers of the third largest economy in this country, which is the Department of Marine Resources. I mean, um, if we look at it, 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 and truthfully, the, and I, I, I'm not basically, uh, you know, lobbying here for the, for, for the department by no means, but what I'm saying is, but the facts must be laid out. You know, the director of, of, of fisheries has just been made an actual position and post within the uh, 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 civil service structure under the New Fisheries Act. Before that, there was no pos no position as Director of Fisheries. But there was a person acting as, dir as a Director of Fisheries, but there was no official position for that. Okay? That's just one thing. I mean, yes, there needs to be an increase in budgets. Yeah, you're, you're, you're asking people to do a tremendous amount of work with no resources. Okay? That, 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 you just can't continue like that. And, and two, um, uh, going back to, to, to a comment that, that uh, Ms. Hanek made, you know, with the sometimes with the with the perceived shortage of conch, I mean that some it, it's 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 a little bit more than just the uh, saying that not having the resources available. What you find at certain times of the year, like right now, there may be a shortage of conch in New Providence with, with certain restaurants because fishermen are now targeting other they're targeting lobster fisheries as ahead of Christmas. Okay, they're now targeting grouper as a you know as ahead of Christmas. You know, to be able to help generate that revenue for Christmas. So they're not going for conch, okay, because it's primarily the live conch trade, and when you bring in live conchs, that's a whole different trade from, you know, frozen conch. So, yes, there are times when you would experience shortages in, in conch, uh, November and September, normally those months. Um, so, so, you know, it's a little bit more than just saying that there's no conch available. Um, um, to what Prescott has said, I, I wholeheartedly agree. We need to be able to better manage tourism, with, with, with uh, our uh, our resource management. More product is taken out of this country or taken from the seas by recreational fishers than commercial fishers. Mm. And I, I, for one, I'm pushing, actually, uh, I know a lot of people would not like it, but I'm pushing for catch limits for recreational fishers in this country. Okay, I've seen recreational fishers go out and come back with a thousand tons. And I would ask them, why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? You know, you, you, you are not a commercial fisherman. Why would you go and get a thousand cars? Why would oh. you go and get a uh, uh, hundred lobsters? You know, um, why? Because you're not a commercial fisherman. So why engage in that type of fishery? Yes. You know, so, yeah. yeah. And I would say to Adrian and I, uh, you know, are in a position to speak to these things. Because sometimes if you are in the system, sometimes if you're in the system, it makes it more difficult. And it's not fair to them because... We have to advocate. Uh, so I'm a Bahamian who make no apology for fighting for all of mm. our interests. So I pay particular attention to these issues. They're not partisan, and I ask the question, and I'm telling you, we have tremendous resource, but we have issues that we need to deal with. We have hundreds of nursery systems around this country. And so you think of a nursery system like the arteries in our body, the lungs that feed, right? So if you're blocking them up, that means you're blocking up the the spawn for all this new marine life. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times these are policy decisions of how we build roads and then also unscrupulous development taking shortcuts. So we have to look at all of the factors. And because I boarded boats from Dominican Republic and Honduras, as Adrian knows this, I'll share one brief story with you. I remember boarding a boat, had 117 divers on board from Dominican Republic. And they were here for five days. They had 110,000 pounds of lobster on wow. board. The amount of wow, grouper, wow. I mean, all this marine life. Mm -hmm. And there were 117 divers with compressors. So we, we have an attraction because of our shallow banks and this fishery. We're sharing these resources with countries from around the world, which means that the things that I pointed out with 
Daniel's Department and Marine Resources, mm -hmm. it has even become even more critical that we pay attention to the underfunding and support that is needed to manage these resorts. Because if the demand keeps going up and then there's less to support through management, when it gets to a critical point of collapse, you won't even have time to be able to respond to it. It's too late. Mm. Yeah. Wow. You say? I want to bring in uh, Dr. Lester Gittens <laughs> with the Department of Marine Resources. Uh, Dr. Gittens, you're hearing what, uh, what these fine folks are saying. Um, let's talk about that. Uh, what, what are the challenges you're facing? Uh, funding, how much of a difference would that make? And, and some of the policies, um, are we looking at adjusting, making some changes to address some of these concerns? Dr. Giddens, are you muted? I'm not. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, apologies. Yes, I've been listening very carefully. Um, I wouldn't disagree with what both gentlemen are saying, but if we start off speaking about the conch issue, we certainly listen to what um, the fishermen say, but persons like Mr. Scott, Prescott Scott has have observed throughout the Bahamas. But we also look at the scientific studies as well. You need information to base our decisions on, and we consider all those sources of information. I can say that the scientific studies show that there are pockets in the Bahamas where there is an abundance of conch, but there are also locations where there aren't enough conch. And an issue that I've noted too is that not everyone recognizes what is considered a problem with the conch fishery. Now, some persons might say they're seeing conch, that means there's no problem. Or they see boatloads of conch in videos, that means there's not a problem. But from the scientific measurement of what the, the problem is, um, you have to look at how many conch there are per unit area. So throughout the region, we've um, figured out that you need at least 100 conch per hectare. That's per 1,000 meters squared. If there's the, there are fewer conch than that, I mean, it's not a sustainable population because they're simply not reproducing enough. You might know that conch are snails, but you might not know that they actually reproduce sexually. That means the male has to encounter the female, they mate, and then they reproduce. With snails hopping on one foot on the seabed, if the population is too low, that reduces the chances of adequate reproduction. And so that is what marine resources uses to measure whether there are enough conch or not. And so, as I said before, there are plenty places that have that, but there's an abundance of places that do not have that threshold. And so persons sometimes find it very difficult to understand that there is a problem and that we actually do, do need to manage. We need to keep reassessing the situation. We would like to hear from persons like um, Mr. Smith and Laroda and the fishermen to, to hear what they've seen. And we believe that there are a lot of conch throughout the Bahamas, but we do need to take steps to make sure that there are enough reproductive populations throughout the Bahamas as well. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of resources, You're cutting out there. I'm not sure what happened. Dr. Giddens, do we lose can you? Hear me? Okay, now we can hear you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, so sorry, perhaps I'm speaking too fast over this, this link. So I'm saying that throughout the Bahamas, uh, sorry, since my time joining the department 21 years ago, at that time we only had very, very few officers throughout the islands. Now we have a presence throughout the islands and we're um, getting more and more equipped, certainly with vessels and training of the officers and so forth. But I mean, certainly we, we would definitely need a, a lot more resources. I think the country understands how important food security is we understand how important agriculture is. We certainly need to support the government in developing agriculture. But for fisheries resources, these are resources that are already there, and all we need to do is protect them. I mean, we saw what happened at the peak of COVID, when persons were not able to go out to supermarkets as often as they would like. We see evidence where they had to turn to the sea to um, obtain a meal. In some of the islands, they turned to juvenile conch, I mean, that, that's a problem, but nonetheless, the food was there for them to get. So it's important for us to realize that we have to do everything we need, everything we can do in order to make sure that these resources are there. It can't be like what Adrian was describing, that 
there's a shortage of conk around this island or you don't find it in the seabed around your province too much. We need to make sure our commercial fishing interests and also our subsistence fishing interests are there. I mean, in a worst case scenario, we will have to turn to the sea. And I'm building on something uh, the former minister had said about making fishing sexy again. That is really and truly important, you know, in that uh, times, sorry, decades or hundreds of years ago, it was considered a noble profession because fishermen risked their lives to provide for themselves mm. and communities. Now, uh, some of that says today that there's a level of risk to them, but ultimately they play a very important role in feeding this country. They should not be looked down upon. And also realize too that they are fishermen, sorry, not just businessmen as well. You're muffled for some reason. We can barely make out what you're saying. I'm saying that. Oh, boy. They are businessmen okay. as well. So uh, all I'm saying is that fishermen are very important. We should not look down upon them. We should recognize that they play an important role in national development. And they are a critical partner for marine resources mm -hmm. and the country in managing our, our fisheries. But, but we don't see them as enemies. We see them as partners. Many tips they give us help us to, I guess, respond with the enforce, appropriate enforcement and so forth. But. I mean, I'll leave it at that for right now and, and weigh in as right. necessary. We only have a few minutes left. I am just want to ask, what should um, consumers be doing, knowing that we do have these challenges, we don't want the situation to get worse? We heard yesterday that globally there are pressures and there are all kinds of things we need to be paying attention to. Prescott Offer, you were saying that we do need to be mindful of what's happening in other parts of the world. We are really, really uh, all connected. Let's talk about that and why consumers need to be paying attention. Yes, because... Uh, while we have these rich marine environment, a lot of these species, they come from other parts of the world. For example, having this m huge amount of mangrove nursery system that's producing the bait fish, but whether it's the tuna, uh, wahoo, other pelagic species, they might be coming here and spending certain periods because they're being fed, but at the same time, they're coming from other countries. Of course, we have our local supply as well. Uh, one of the things is I'm always looking at how to address these, truly solve these issues. So for example, I've noticed uh, with something I give my father credit to, there were persons picking up all kinds of baby conks in the north by the vandras, uh, netting the bonefish, and we got fly fishing started, all catch and release. Mm -hmm. And today, the marine life is being in that area. Mm. So we have to, we can't just take one approach to it. So there are a lot of species in our deep water that we need to get behemoths exposed to to take pressure of just only saying conch, mm. grouper. And when we talk about group, we have many groupers, but while we only like to talk about Nassau grouper and lobster and conch, like that's all exists in the Bahamas. Yeah. There's so much marine resources but we also have to empower fishermen to uh, focus on species that grow at a faster rate and can be managed totally different. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, again, I go back to if areas that Daniel and Dr. Gittens are in are not getting the support that they need, that's a major concern for true management of our fisheries mm -hmm. and our environment because they go... They go hand in hand. You can't expect for policy decisions that can wipe out entire fisheries. And then at the end of the day, it's all because they're very limited in their ability to be able to pay attention to these issues. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's, a, there's a multifaceted approach you have to take when you're looking at these issues. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that ties perfectly into this year's theme, mm -hmm. which is linking science and society towards its towards a vision of sustainable fisheries. And so it's that concept of with Department of Marine Resources, with the Forestry Department, because we manage the mangroves in one capacity. This uh, Marine Resources manages it in another. But together, we have to make sure that we're making policies that work together yeah. to, to ensure that this resource is sustainable. Yeah. And so that is the whole point. We Yes, our resources are limited, but with collaboration, with partnership, not just us, Bahamas National Trust, 
Bowen, Bahamas Wildlife Enforcement Network, and also in terms of with the actual our BDF, the Defense Force as well, all of us work together to help manage and monitor and enforce our areas. Mm -hmm. We can do more, yes. We need more resources, yes. But there is hope that we are working together with it. So our Marine Protected Area Network is a part of that solution, and we have seen success, and we've been touted. Um, Exuma Land and Sea Park is an example of success where stocks have because of no catchment areas so as we use that and work with communities so that therefore there'll be portions that would be no take but but for short periods to ensure that stocks can increase so Mm -hmm. thank you i'm really curious what's an alternative to conch that we can that we should get into we have huge alternative most of our marine resources are in the deep water so uh if we put a network of fishing for red snappers uh we have so many different kinds of snappers in the deep water that we can take a lot of pressure. And then also the area that I've, I've spent years training hundreds of guides, the fly fishing industry generates the most revenue in the entire Bahamas on these islands. Mm-hmm. So there's a need to promote other sectors that can use our resources, but use it in a sustainable yeah. way. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so before we go, the 76th edition going on now. Yes. But yes. at the 75th, Prescott Smith got a very big award there, the Gladding Memorial Award, and congratulations, sir. Um, that's, that's a big recognition there. Yeah, so um, I, I want to say something to that opportunity for my country. Uh, it was really an opportunity, that I would say, God opened up to bring the conference to the Bahamas mm-hmm. so that we can shine a global attention to this issue mm-hmm. about how unique the Bahamas is. So. I would say something for all Bohemians to celebrate. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, I'm just a, a, a tool, one tool in the box. Oh, wow. You know, so, but it's for, it's about all of us. Yeah. Congratulations, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you all so much for being here this morning. I know yeah. you all have to get to the conference and work and the other things to do this morning. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you very much. Danielle Hannock, Prescott Smith, Adrian LaRota, Dr. Lester Giddens. Great conversation. Hope people are paying attention to what we're saying. Yes, Adrian. Right. Yes, Adrian. Yes. Yeah, quickly before we go, and I, I, I know you're closing out, but um, um, on, this, uh, on the topic of what can Bahamians do, we'd like Bahamians to actually begin to begin to enjoy the the, the other not so traditional sea, uh, 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 seafood seafood uh, uh, you know fish and stuff that we have here. I mean, Prescott pointed to it. I mean, we got over seven, to, actually four different types of bupa. Let's not, let's try, let's consume some of those others other than the than the than the Nassau bupa. Wow. We, you know, we have we have the grants. We have the turbots. You know, let's let's uh, uh, consume some of those type of fish instead of the traditional snappers and lobster and cooper. That's what Bahamians can do. Yeah. Okay? Excellent. Yeah. Great. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Have a blessed day. And yeah. we're going to have a great conference. <laughs> yes, <laughs> all right, indeed. Thank you. All right, we're going to break for news and be back with business. Stay with us. Hi. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day.
Good morning and welcome to Morning Event Business on this Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. Welcome back to our Morning Blend listeners. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn along with Chester Robards and it's time for our twice monthly segment with Access Accelerated Small Business Development Center. And uh, this morning we are getting some uh, highlights from the Survival of the Pitchest competition. Um, uh, and uh, here to tell us all about it, very pleased to welcome back to the show, Corporate Communications Manager, Michael uh, Munnings. And he's been on before, uh, the owner of Farmhouse Bistro, Romero Dorset. And uh, we're welcoming from Limeade, Bahamas, Joshua Miller. Everybody, great to have you with us. Welcome back if you've been here before. Good morning. Thank you for having us. Good morning. So, um, survival of the pitchest. Mm-hmm. Okay, tell us about that. Um, what was that about? Okay, so last month the SBDC would have sponsored the CIF Forum, that's the Caribbean Investment Forum, and that was really a three-day event for business owners to be connected with investors. And as a part of that sponsorship, we would have also hosted what's called Survival of the Pitches. So mm-hmm. it's a it's a business pitch competition. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. And so... We had over, I think there were over 150 persons that would have signed up for the pitch competition. And then in the end, there were seven finalists. And of the seven finalists, there were four Bahamians. So that it was so amazing. And then of the four Bahamians, you see we have two winners wow. out of the top three. So pretty much the Bahamas won in our, in our eyes. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like it. Sounds like it. All right. So tell us about all those folks who, who took part. Or two yeah, what kind of stuff did we see? So, sure. So there was an ice cream company, homemade ice cream. And, of course, the the winner, his name is Keegan Patrick. He's from St. Lucia, and he had a contract procurement business where he would have been, like, the liaison for government contracts as opposed to just posting them out there. His company would do the sourcing, the the procurement, and all of that, um, you know, to lead to the business. So we we, we were sitting there. Don't even don't go down that rabbit hole right now. (laughs) We won't talk about that just yet. And then of course we had um, Aiden Barrow of House of Assembly. She does manufacturing Mm -hmm. of, you know, bags, wallets, leather goods, handcrafted items. And then we had Ramilda Rose Design. So her name is Jillian Curry Williams. And she does um, fashion design. It's prints that are pretty much a tribute to breast cancer survivors. And so then we have Joshua Miller of Limeade and Romero Dorset of the Farmhouse Bistro. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it yeah, was wow. was intense. The judges were deliberating for quite some time oh, after really? the seven pitches. Um, they had two minutes to pitch. So that's important because that was really no time. <laughs> no time at all. And they had to do it live, no videos or anything? Correct. Like? Mm, so okay. it was live um, in front of a, a good size audience, I think about 50 persons. And yeah, at the Atlantis Resort, and these two would have made the top three. But the, the two minutes followed like a, yes. it was like a preliminary so, thing, right? Well, so you know, um, as a part of the application process, each individual would have submitted a pitch deck and a video. And so from the 150 plus wow. seven finalists, and I'm like, wow, the Bahamas really made an impact. So it's not just a great thing for SBDC, but it's actually, it's good news for us mm-hmm. in general because, you know, four out of seven, yeah, yeah. That, that's amazing. All right, say it again for people who missed it, where all these people were coming from. from so How many different countries? Um, different Caribbean countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, St. Lucia, um, Turks and Caicos, Trinidad and Tobago, all Bahamas, place. all over the place. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So we really... Showed up and we showed really up. stood out on mm-hmm. on the regional stage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Excellent, excellent. Mm-hmm. All right, so let let's talk. Let's talk about the whole process um, and um, uh, how you were feeling uh, during all of this. Um, who wants to go first? You want to go first, Romero? Yeah, sure. I'll go right. first. Mm-hmm. So it uh, it was a very intense experience. Uh, like we said, you had to do a um, and a video. So shout out to my team who you know stepped stepped up and helped me out a lot. Uh, I couldn't do it by myself. Um, so that's the importance of having a great team. Um, so I'm not really the one for public speaking or for uh, going in large crowds or whatnot. I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I'm okay, but I'm, I, I prefer not to. <clears throat> um, so doing the pitch deck was kind of awkward. Um, doing a video where that you have to speak into the microphone and coordinate hand and eye coordination. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, 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 it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So then we had some practice. The SPDC was amazing in terms of the resources that they um, gave to us, and they assisted us uh, greatly in it. Um, Leo would have, um, Mr. Leo Rule would have helped us out, and you know he was making sure that we were on on point. Um, we've had calls and we'd have follow ups, um, sure that we were good and we were prepared um, for the pitch deck. Um, so we had a short timeline in terms of submitting the pitch deck and the video. Um, and then we, it was a selection process between, I think, 153 um, participants from throughout the Caribbean. Um, so when they called and said that we were in a top finalist, I was like, whoa, wow. like, this, is, this, is, this is great. Mm -hmm. You know, to know that you beat out um, folks from the other Caribbean, you know how we go. Mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> just, we, <laughs> we won over, over the Caribbean, that's, that's it. We, mm -hmm. we, we took it. Mm -hmm. um, so just to be a part of the semifinalists was was an amazing experience. Um, some some of the other Bahamian companies I've never actually experienced. Um, so having a good dialogue to meet with them prior to the finals was great. Um, everyone was in their own corner. It was an intense day um, to figure out your footing and trying to see who was coming with what. Um, and then we had a quick, um, I guess, production meeting of what what took place. And that in itself was was pretty intimidating because we had the judges behind us, we had the audience in front of us, we had the screens to the side of us, and then we had this clicker that we had to use and point in a particular direction. So <clears throat> hand and eye coordination again was definitely a thing. And we had two minutes to um, submit and to prepare um, our able to relay our pitch deck. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it was it was intense. Um, so that two minutes kind of started from we what got on from we got on the stage. It, it wow. was like the next thing, thing you know, night, yeah. yeah. From <laughs> say goodnight, it was like on. Wow. It's like whoa, give me a minute. I I'm, I ain't ready yet. Yeah, but um, you know, trying to you know uh, catch yourself and and bring it all together. Um, we were we did we did tremendous um, for the team in Bahamas. Mm -hmm. um, and then we had a two minute question and answer where it is, you had the judges who would have asked you all manner of questions about finances and about um, knowing your business. Um, so that was paramount of being uh, one of the top three, knowing your business and knowing all of the infrastructure and all the financial questions. Um, and they really dig deep into mm -hmm. um, supply and demand and wow. understanding. No, no, they did really wanted to make sure you know your business. Yeah. How many judges? How many? Again? Four. Four, 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 okay. four judges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. after we did the pitch, um, you know, we all sat down um, and, you know, it was quite a while of the judges deliberating. So um, after that, when they started to go top three, sweating bricks, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because again, I was out of my comfort zone in terms of doing this. So when I heard top three um, um, farmhouse bistro, I was like, whoa, <laughs> wow. we, we did it. Mm -hmm. um, it, was a, it was a great camaraderie between the Bahamian companies. Uh, we all rallied uh, to one another, and we all, you know, supported one another, uh, encouraged one another after the competition, and even after the competition, you know, we said, you know, we'll meet up and make sure that we stay in touch. Excellent. So, you know, it, we were all winners yeah. uh, for just being there, and it was a great, it was a great experience knowing that um, uh, the Bahamas took um, part. Mm -hmm. and one uh, in the top three. All right, so we want to hear more about your pitch in a bit, but uh, Joshua Joshua Miller with Lime Aid Bahamas. You tell, tell us about this experience and what that was like, and if you were feeling the same jitters as we're Get a little bit closer to the mic for us. Yeah, put, yeah. yeah most definitely. A whole lot of jitters. Um, if I just think about my experience from the start, um, being very Bahamian, I was last minute. The application was due at, <laughs> what, I think 11.59. Yeah. I started working on my pitch at 11. <laughs> you know, um, shout out to my wife. Um, she she just sat with me and we literally said, we're going to just keep doing a bunch of takes of this until we find something that works. And I think by about 11.40, um, I was able to submit my nice. my application. <laughs> wow. Yeah, shout out to Leo as well. You know, I had him up late as well, listening to my pitch. Hey, what you think about this one? You just got to pass the test. And he's like, yeah, man, this sounds good. Yeah, so I just want to say also thanks. Thanks to Leo. You know, he's very supportive. He's also, he's always on your team and trying to, you know, push you forward. You know, I was, I was, I was surprised actually um, that I was one of the finalists and I was very appreciative of the opportunity um, to represent the Bahamas on that level. Mm -hmm. What was that uh, two minutes after, like? What was that? So... 
Mr. Dawson mentioned two minutes, but it wasn't two minutes. It was actually a minute and 40 seconds. <laughs> so I went up on the stage. You know, I was just kind of testing the flicker, you know, testing the yeah. mic, you know, but, saying. And the countdown two, is on. Two, one, two, three, lime. And literally when I looked down, it was like one minute and 40 <laughs> seconds left. The, the pleasantries so I, was on 30 seconds. I'm telling you. I'm telling yeah, yeah. you. So, so I had to kind of just speed through, mm. you know, my presentation. Mm -hmm. I, I think I was maybe... 80% through of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even complete it, to oh, be honest. Wow. But yeah. I guess, you know, what I said at the beginning was, you know, a bit impactful because mm -hmm. I talked about my story, why I started my business mm -hmm. and all of those yeah. things. So it resonated with a lot of people. And I think it was enough for, yeah. you know, for me to pull through. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So, so tell I, us about I want to know what yeah, a few minute pitch sounds right, like. What did honest. you do? What did you say? What did you ask? What, tell us about it. Romero? <laughs> mm -hmm. So the two minute, two minute pitch deck pretty much was a overview of your business plan and an overview of your company and what it is that your company wants to do um, in terms of finances, in terms of um, gaining capital. So mm -hmm. the, the overall prize was, was 10,000 USD. Um, so that's, we wanted to show what we were going to do with the $10,000. Um, so we had to, like I say, you had to know your business. You had to be able to present your business different from everyone else. And mm -hmm. you had to really show what stood out. Um, you had to make your business stand out because you had a lot of great competitors there, um, from the Caribbean. Um, I think one of the highlights of the whole forum was definitely AI. Um, but well, of course I'm not trying to replace, um, human cooks with, um, artificial <laughs> intelligence, but so well, I can't. Thank goodness. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> but, um. You really, really had to put your company at the forefront um, and say what it's what what makes your company unique and what makes your company different, um, and really. Yeah, so what, what is the, what is Farmhouse Bistro? So farmhouse what makes Bistro, it? Well, what made it different for us is that we are a farm-to-table restaurant. We are growing our own vegetables. Um, we are self-sufficient as best as possible. Um, and when where we're not self-sufficient, we um, source our products from reasonably reasonably um, source outlets. Mm -hmm. um, we do uh, reach out to other farmers. We reach out to other vendors who have homemade um, products that we can use within what we are doing. Um, so we try to showcase as much Bahamian product as we possibly can. Uh, we try to liaise with other Bahamian creatives. Um, so that's from content creation to business owners to other developers, um, even in terms of web development and whatnot. So we try to have a broad spectrum of all of those persons that we can um, partake in business with. So we're all about young Bahamians. We're all about um, pushing the agenda of Bahamianization mm -hmm. and making sure that we can show, you know, because everyone looks, everyone's looking for a handout and we're showing that, hey, we're not going to wait on the government. We're not going to wait on civic organizations. We're not going to wait on, you know, anyone else. We're going to make sure that we're going to push Bahamians as best as we can. So that is doing. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And just to add mm -hmm. to what Mr. Dorset was saying after the whole <clears throat> pitch competition, he told me he's going to start growing limes. He's going to grow a lime All right, tree. There so you go. Can tell me <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm holding him to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, just in a nutshell, what my one minute and 40 second pitch looked like was, um, and shout out to Toastmasters Club 1600. I try my best to grab my audience first. I want them to know and feel me, why I'm doing what I do every day. Right. And from there, I have a offer proposition. I say, this is what you could be a part of. You know, so that's basically how I started my pitch. And, you know, I, like I said, I was only about 80% through. Yeah. Um, but like I say, just grab an audience, saying what I have to offer quickly, um, you know, I guess it was, it was definitely sufficient. Um, as if you're not familiar with mm -hmm. it. Um, we are the manufacturer and distributor of flavored limeade beverages. We make actually six flavors a lot of people don't know, mm -hmm. in both alcoholic and non-alcoholic. What? Um, <laughs> I, don't, I didn't know about the alcoholic version. <laughs> really? Is that yeah, right? yeah, 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 yes, we do. Oh, yes, okay. Do. Uh, yep, mm -hmm. yep, yep. How long have you been um, around now? Next year is going to make 10 years. Wow. Yep. Okay. Yep, mm -hmm. we've been around yeah. quite some time. Uh, wow. I know Chester could probably attest to yeah, yeah, <laughs> being yeah. on the side of me at some <laughs> events and stuff like that, yeah. man. You know, it's quite a bit of fun times. But, yep, it's 10 years of pushing and, you know, striving. Mm -hmm. yep. How is the industry? How? But tell us about that. How does that work here? Uh, it's definitely a, a, a very competitive market. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you have a lot of um, distributors that 
you know, import a lot of products um, from the U.S. And it's in this market locally. You have the Coca-Colas, the Aka Pure Water, and all those different companies that, you know, mm-hmm. bottle and make, make beverages as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but we try to find our space within the market. Um, we try to segregate and distinguish ourselves from, you know, the various product offerings that they may have and, you know, try to bring something unique. Um, we see ourselves as one of the small but larger companies making, you know, a very fresh product that is sitting on the shelves. Um, and being able to do that, you know, it's at such a large volume. I think, yeah. you know, it speaks measures. Mm-hmm. Are you seeing more uh, more impact from this kind of by Bahamian, local, fresh kind of movement? I feel most, like there's a movement. Most definitely, most yeah. definitely. And, and we are very appreciative of, of the Bahamians. Um, they definitely... Um, we're very receptive to our product, and you know every day um, as, as I could do it, I, I thank you. You know I go to the food store or the gas mm-hmm. station, I pull up and I see someone buying a product. You yeah. know sometimes I'd actually just walk up to them and say thank you yeah. for mm-hmm. the support. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay, so the grand prize was ten thousand. Mm-hmm. So w- what about second and third? What, what? So the second second was seven thousand and a trip, um, one way trip. Way trip to um, on Virgin yeah. Atlantic, mm-hmm. yeah, uh-huh. and the third place was three thousand and a ticket, I think, with Caribbean Airlines. Okay, excellent, uh-huh. excellent. So who was one, two, three? So one was Keegan Patrick of St. Lucia. Two was Limeade Bahamas. And oh, okay. Three was Farmhouse Beast. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So <clears throat> how is this money going to help you? How would the ten thousand have helped you? Tell us about that. So, um, you know, we, we big eye. Of course, <laughs> of course. We big eye. So um, what I wanted to do was definitely increase our farm's output by purchasing some more uh, hydroponic um, equipment. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that, we would have been able to reduce the amount of um, things that we purchase. Um, and then the output of that, we, which we would have... Um, um, somehow incorporated into our into our restaurant, and then also, <coughs> sorry, also also uh, create byproducts. So uh, that's what we were was that's what we were vying for. Mm-hmm. Okay, All right. And Lime. And for me, like I said, the fact that I walked in the room not even expecting um, to be able to you know be one of the finalists, I was just appreciative to be there, you right. know, to promote my company and actually tell people about the SBDC and the great things that they're doing. Yeah. Um, so when I got a seven, you know, seven thousand dollar award, I was I was just surprised. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, def- sure. Definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> can use it. His seven yeah, three would can be use ten. So <laughs> oh, so you gotta work together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely use it to, you know, buy more raw material. Mm-hmm. Um, raw material inventory. But, yeah. But yeah, I was just, you know, grateful for the opportunity. You could give him some for the lime trees. What? Most definitely. <laughs> Get him started, right? Get him started. <laughs> Michael. So I also want to talk about how the experience outside of survival of the pictures, right? Because the Caribbean Investment Forum was a three-day event. Mm-hmm. So just by being a part of the competition, these gentlemen actually had a ticket to the entire three-day event. Right. Wow. As well as we were able to allow 20 of our clients the opportunity to attend this event. And the tickets were, I think, about $800 for the three days. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so through that opportunity, they were able to gain access to information, as you remember, um, financing, and then, of course, networking, because the whole purpose of the CIF was to kind of position the Bahamas as a great investment hub and then connect these investors with local Mm -hmm. business owners. Mm -hmm. And so you had persons from not just within the Caribbean region, but you know, out external parts in U.S., et cetera. And so I think it was a great opportunity, even if, you know, perhaps the Bahamas had not placed or, or to attend that three-day conference was amazing. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Uh, if you did make any connections, uh, the networking, um, uh, what, 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 was it, what came out of it that really is going to help you in the future? So I popped in um, to a few. I didn't, wasn't able to stay long, uh, but I did make some connections. And um, my mandate was everywhere I went, I wanted to promote Farmhouse Bistro. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, Farmhouse, Farmhouse, Farmhouse. I know people are probably sick of hearing Farmhouse Bistro. <laughs> um, I did uh, see a great return because we did see quite a bit of the uh, participants visit the restaurant. Oh, they would have nice. reached out to me and say, hey, we're here. Um, thank you for inviting us. 
Um, so that was pretty much what I was doing. Um, I did meet a lot of great um, competitors. I did meet uh, some great finances. Um, I learned a lot, again, like I said, about AI and how it can help. We're, the Bahamas were opposed to anything um, digital in the beginning, but um, it was it was a great it was a great lesson. Mm -hmm. um, so I wasn't able to get the entire spectrum of the of of the um, of the show, um, but for the little for the little that I get, it did help. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. and Joshua, what yeah. about you? <clears throat> Well, I can't beat that. I, I met the guy who said he's going to grow limes for <laughs> 2024 for me. So that, that, that is great. Um, mm -hmm. I also met a few um, finances as well. I actually spoke to a guy um, out of Jamaica. You know, he's talking about uh, potential financing and stuff like that as well. So there were a lot of opportunities there, um, just being able to speak with people um, and also just connect with people that you, you know, currently know in the financial world. Um, just to talk to them about what you're doing. Um, I had the opportunity to do all of that, and I'm just so appreciative of mm -hmm. that. So you've done it once. Are you done, or can you enter a, the survival of the pitches again in the future? Do you know so, how? So, well, okay, so the Caribbean Investment Forum, I'm not sure where it's going to be for 2024. They mm -hmm. haven't announced the location as yet. But, yeah, I, think I they mean, did. They, they, they yeah, did? I don't remember. But, I think it's um, uh, Guyana. Diana? Okay, well, I'm not sure. Sure. trying to The last that one sounds, I think yeah. was like Trinidad or something like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So, yeah, so for us, I mean, it's not, you know, once in our client base, once the opportunity is presented, you, you can go Try back again. again right? Yeah, because, mm -hmm. I mean, you may win the, the grand prize this time. Yeah. Well, well, and survival who knows, of the, the stakes should be higher. Was an SBDC thing or was something the CIF no. put on? So it was an early stage, um, of course, pitch competition in conjunction with Draper Startup House Draper, and, right, yes. and Invest um, Turks and Caicos. And so the SBDC and, and Invest TCI, we powered the the event. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was literally um, CETA and, and Draper Startup right. House. So, so the next CIF might have another iteration yeah. of yeah. a, of a yeah. pitch competition. Most you may definitely. see some behemoths in there. Yeah. Yes, yeah. most yeah. definitely. Great stuff. And then, of course, you know, there'll be local opportunities. And this is, again, one of the benefits of being mm -hmm. our client. We will always share these opportunities um, with, with them first. Excellent. Excellent. And you, we're right in the middle of MSME month. Um, uh, oh, yes. Still some things going on. Lots of stuff mm -hmm. still to come. So last week, of course, we kicked off MSME Month. We had a press conference with our partners, um, Alive Business and Bahamas Air. So Bahamas Air is our official travel partner for the month. We have quite a few family island trips um, throughout the month, and so they are um, helping us out in that regard. And then Alive Business, they've come on board as well for the second time. And so we're doing this collaborative effort of engaging business owners throughout the Bahamas for this particular month. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do it year round, but there's a more of an intentional focus this month. And so we find that a lot of persons say, you know, everything is so Nassau centric. And so we have an event each Saturday in this month on a different family island. Wow. Yes, it's called Brunch and Business. And so you'll be able to network with like-minded indiv individuals as well as us and our partners. Um, Great food, delicious food, and it's free. It's on the house. Mm -hmm. All of the events are free, and then you'll be able to hear discussions, presentations from a live business on ways that you can digitize your business, and then of course the SBDC. What's available? What's coming up next? Grant funding, equity funding, loan funding. What you got for us? Mm -hmm. And so pretty much we want to be able to expand our offerings in the family islands. But then there are some weekend we'll be in Kent Island. Um, the event will be at Fountain Bay at 10 a.m. Um, and then. So what's notable for us is that some of these islands may have seen like, you know, one application for the guaranteed loan program. Mm -hmm. And so how do we get you right. in the numbers, in the running? You know, of course, it's always going to be Nassau, Grand Bahama, Eleuthera, Abaco in, in the top. But how do we get you guys um, in the runnings? And it's very possible. We had our first approval out of Selena Point, Acklands this year for a business. We had... Um, in San Salvador, there was a business owner that received 250000 from the Guaranteed Loan Program. Wow. So we want these out islands to know, listen, it is possible. We could help you with the business plan. We could, you know, prepare you for the investment committee meetings. Because not everybody, you know, public speaking is, is they say it's the number one thing. We engage you and ensure that you are ready to compete on not just on this national platform, but be able to apply for funding in, in other avenues. Excellent. And wow. next thing you know, you, you may, we may have someone from Cat Island on In Survival of the Pitches. Right. Yeah. All right. All right. So, um, by the way, people are texting in. We're, we're saying pitches. Pitches with a P and a T at the end. 
<laughs> They're not texting the, the text line. They are. They're texting you. <laughs> that, that too. So, yes. Pitches. <laughs> Pitch competition. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I got to do with my daughter. P, 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 as in. Pancake. Pancake. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> with a T on the end. All right. So, hey, uh, we're approaching the holidays um, and the future. Let's talk about that. Farmhouse Bistro. What do you, what do you, what do you got during the... We have Thanksgiving that's coming up. Um, we're going to have an amazing uh, farm-to-table Thanksgiving meal. Um, we have a few other initiatives. We're going to do a dinner and a movie. We're going to do um, a holiday brunch. Um, so we have things to keep people engaged. Uh, we have things to keep people wanting to come back. Um, we're always trying to think ahead and how we can be on the cutting edge of the restaurant industry. So we want people to be engaged. We want them to have fun and we want them to know that it's a safe environment that they can be in. So we're always thinking about ways to um, to engage our customers. Mm-hmm. A holiday schedule going to be different or what do people need to know? Um, no, it's going to be the same schedule. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the same schedule. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes switching up the schedule mix, mixes people up. So mm-hmm. we're going to stay consistent to what it is that we're doing. Uh, we're going to the same great location, same great place, same great food, uh, same great people. Um, and I hope to see everybody there soon. Mm-hmm. And make reservations. Or make reservations, yeah. open table, or you can you know, call into the restaurant and make your reservations. Okay. Um, yeah. So we are, we're going to have some great things. Hopefully we'll kick off some things with the SBDC as well, too. Um, uh, putting them on guard. So, you know, <laughs> hey, all these great, great things happening around. So, um, you know, just putting my little plug in there. <laughs> um, but, um, but seriously, we, um, we're always great, grateful to work with the SBDC um, uh, for us. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And what about Limeade? Have we got anything special for the holidays? And what, what's in the future? Limeade? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely try that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But yeah, we, we do plan on coming up with some specialty type flavors that mm-hmm. we'll offer if you come into the warehouse only. Um, the first one that we're working along with is a strawberry watermelon flavor. Wow, wow. Yeah, mm-hmm. it'll just only be unique to, you know, if you come into the warehouse. Right. Uh, but we will be launching some other flavors as well just to keep it interesting. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, just you could go to the nearest grocery store and pick, pick one up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and in the long term, five, ten years, where do, where do you see the company? All over the world, mm. um, we want to branch into you know more Caribbean islands, you know, and then eventually, mm-hmm. and then keep going, you know, further and further up, um, based on where there are a lot of Caribbeans concentrated. But um, I think that's definitely the the overall goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and um, Chester's asking, where do you find the alcohol version? No, <laughs> come to the warehouse as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, all right, wonderful stuff. And the next time you're here, just remember, you know, samples are welcome, and, and that we've got video cameras so the the audience can see too, right? So, right, and, so. and Limit is keen on doing like you know, kind of personalized things for like you could do a farmhouse a farmhouse drink. For just for them, De- right? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we spoke about collaborations and uh, having yeah. a few things um, 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 in the in the restaurant. So right. we're going to definitely look uh, towards doing that. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. excellent stuff. So congratulations to the two of you. This is wonderful stuff. We know that bigger, yeah. bigger, better things are coming. Um, great stuff again. Joshua Miller with Limeade Bahamas and Romero Dorset with Farmhouse Bistro. Yeah. Thank you again and congratulations. And Michael, Michael, always exciting things when you come. Michael Munnings with uh, SBDC, A Squared. Um, uh, great talking with you. Thank you. I just want to remind all of our listeners to tune into our social media pages so that they can stay abreast of everything that's happening this month for National MSME Month. Okay. Yes. Wonderful stuff. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you all again. All right. All right we're going to take a break. This is Morning Blend Business on Guardian Radio 96.9. <laughs> Put $100 into the CFAL Savings Express Plan and make sure your money keeps growing. Earn interest on your savings while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL. 
growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. There's a new electric vehicle in town. The Jack brand of SUVs, trucks, sedans, and commercial vans available only at Easy Car Sales, home of the fully electric vehicle. For a powerful, smooth ride at a fraction of the cost to drive, leave the pump behind and hit the road with Jack. Visit easy242.com to see our brand new Jack models and drop into Easy Car Sales for a test drive. It'll have you singing. Hit the road with Jack and don't you pump gas no more. Struggling to repay your loan? Let us help you get back on track with payment terms that suits your financial situation and improve your credit score and credit report with the Bahamas Credit Bureau. Inquire about our restructured loans today. Call us at 356-7764. Earning zero interest on your savings at the bank? With as little as $100, you can start earning interest on your money while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank with the Seafeld Savings Express Plan. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL, growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. It's time for your morning business report brought to you by CFAL. The government has signed a public-private partnership management agreement with AV Ports, Avports, Phoenix Infrastructure, Plenary Americas, and Bimini Airport Development Partners. This is to redevelop and manage the South Bimini International Airport. The signing reportedly took place between the investors and Prime Minister Philip Davis, according to an article on Airport News website Regional Gateway. The article says that uh, the collaboration sets the stage for airfield improvement and upgrading the terminal facilities to accommodate additional international and domestic commercial flights into the airport and enhanced customer service. Founder and CEO of Phoenix Infrastructure Group, Jeremy Ebby, says that they plan to deliver world-class airport to the people of Bimini and the Bahamas at large. Carbon Management Limited Director Anthony Ferguson says uh, the company is in talks to possibly list the first natural asset company on the New York Stock Exchange in early 2025. Carbon Management Limited manages the mapping, verification, and eventual monetization of the country's blue carbon assets, which have been estimated at more than 18 billion tons. Ferguson noting that the company is sourcing mostly international funding right now to continue with its mapping efforts and has had positive discussions with the South Korean-based Green Climate Fund. The Bahamas Agricultural and Industrial Corporation, BAIC, and the Access Accelerated Small Business Development Center signing a memorandum of understanding that will allow the seamless transition from business plan development with BAIC to funding opportunities with the SBDC. While the two entities have been working together on helping entrepreneurs to develop their agriculture and orange economy businesses, the new structure will create the mechanism for funding. SBDC Interim Executive Director Samantha Roll says the OMU signing is timely, given that this month has been declared Micro, Small, and Medium Enterprises Month, or MSME. BIC Executive Chairman Leroy Major says that the... Many farmers, food processors, and handicraft artists will benefit from the arrangement with the SBDC. He explained that there are several projects, including farmers who will be involved in the Golden Yolk Project, who currently need access to funding. The Balmoral Residential Development Phase 1 Condominium Association and Balmoral Owners Association have launched an appeal against the bid to the government to the development's owners to build a condo hotel on the property 
after the town planning committee gave the developers or the development owners the green light for a four-story building in February of last year. The town planning committee recently rejected the Balmoral development owner's new application to build an eight-story condo on the property of condo hotel. However, the approval for the four-story complex still stands, and the residents of the Balmoral community are once again appealing to the TPC to reject the development of the condo hotel. You can read more about that in today's Guardian business section. Overseas, the European Central Bank and other policymakers across Europe need to keep interest rates at current elevated levels until they're sure inflation is under control, despite, despite sluggish growth. That's according to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, warning against premature celebration as inflation declines from its peak. The Washington-based IMF said that cost of underestimating inflation's persistence could be painfully high and result in another painful round of rate hikes that could rob the economy of a large chunk of growth. In your market watch, recapping trading on the BISX. From Tuesday, your market movers. AML Foods Limited moving 1,500 shares, closing at 450 unchanged. Commonwealth Brewery moving 200, unchanged at $11.01. Doctors Hospital moving 2,600, up 45 cents, closing at 1050. Consolidated Water down or up for 14 cents, closing at 639. Emir Incorporated closing at 867 unchanged. That's your mark. Oh, the Bissex All Share Index closing at 2,947.98, up 65.49. That's your market watch. And that is your morning business report brought to you by CFAL, growing wealth for future generations. And that's going to do it for us. Chester Robards, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. I will see you again 